Welcome, race fans, to Brighton Speedway for night number two of the Labor Day Classic here on GeForce TV. I'm Greg Kelman. With me, Adam Ross. Clinton Jeffrey will join us down trackside here tonight as Rock 107, Mystical Distributing, and Rapid Rad brings us the back half of the Labor Day Classic. And, Adam, if uh, tonight is even half of what last night is, it's going to be another great one because it was action-packed from start to finish, and we're not just saying that either. No, it's been phenomenal racing. Greg, this has been three days of great racing. I know a lot of the fans here wouldn't have paid much attention, but Canadian Tire Motorsport Park today was awesome show. Friday night at Oshwegan Speedway, we had some great racing there. This has just been three days jam-packed with good weather, good racing, and good times. And that, we've had cars on track right now. This is Hot Laps for the Crate Sprint Cars, the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's. And then we'll get into our qualifying sessions once Hot Laps are complete. So cars just getting a little bit of uh, a testing here before we get ready to go green flag racing. Five divisions on the card tonight. The Action Sprint Tour back again, along with the Lawns We Do 360 Sprint Cars. The Thunderstocks are also on the card, along with the Comp Fours and the Stingers. So five divisions once again here tonight, ready to do battle on this one-third of a mile clay oval. And I'll tell you what, uh, last night, this was a fast racetrack, well-prepared racetrack. And I expect to see the same thing again today. They've done a lot of work, more than they traditionally would do on a two-day show, I think. Whatever they've done, it's been effective. Great sprints out there. We got one driver change tonight. It's April Wilson, well, April Deo, I guess, driving the 15 machine. They've taken a one off it. Last night it was Dan Deo in the 115. Tonight, April is behind the wheel of this one. I actually just looked down the list. I wasn't sure if she goes by April Wilson or April Deo, but it's April Wilson on the list. car out tonight that was not out last night, the 11W of Josh Robertson. One of the team Turner entries, of course, Jamie Turner had issues making it here at all. As he got his race car here just in time to run the heat race, and they got the motorhome here just in time to go to bed, from what I understand. So lap times, the quickest so far in the Action Sprint Tour, a 13.014 second lap. And I've just been kind of watching lately at what some of the speeds are here. So on a third of a mile in kilometers an hour, so we can kind of get an idea, 148 kilometers an hour. And you might think, you know what? There's times we kind of do that on the 401, but uh, you don't make a hard left-hand turn. <laughs> Twice exactly an in average, that 13 seconds. An average lap, average speed rather, around this place. That's unbelievable. They're hauling the mail. And then last night, I don't know if you noticed it, but but I did. I don't always notice how drastic the difference is between a crate sprint and a 360 sprint. But yeah. last night, when the first 360 sprint sprint took the green flag, I'm like, oh my goodness, these cars are flying. Yeah, last night it was about a second difference between the two, and uh, I was kind of watching that during practice. And Yeah, the 360s who are heading out onto the racetrack right now will definitely put up those quicker times. Tricky Nicky. Nick Sheridan took the win last night. It was an impressive run, and he's called his shot again. He's going to do it again. Did you hit your funny bone? No. That bee or hornet that's been in here all afternoon finally got me oh that's the worst i don't think i'm allergic but i'm, I'm not giving you mouth to mouth <laughs> so just in case you're wondering it's been great knowing you i'm sorry for what's gone down but oh you're a pal well you know it, do you want me to build your hopes up and tell you i'll be here for you greg till the bitter end but <laughs> No, and this, sooner than you this think. This could be the better end right now. Thanks. Oh, my. You're now the second most irritating thing in the tower. That bee just became number one. 
I don't know how I feel about that. And I spent all afternoon with it. Well, we spent a lifetime together, Greg. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have to wear a wedding ring, though, with you. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm more of a cross to bear than a ring. <laughs> Darren Dryden is beautiful. 12 double D on the front straightaway. Kyle Phillips in the 21. He had a shot last night. Came home with a second place finish. The Lone Wolf, Fire, Lone Wolf Fireworks 17X of Corey Turner. Kevin Pauls in the body line 46. Glenn Styers in the Oshwegan Speedway 0. And the Joyceville Jet, Rick Wilson in the 42W. Draper Door sponsored 42W. Landed in the drink last night. Yeah, he did. And uh, in all of that, Brett Meineker actually probably got the most water. <laughs> His jacket got wet wiping off the visor, and he was uh, ankle deep down there in the creek. Throttle linkage uh, problem there for Rick last night. So the 360 sprints will kick things up. We'll have a look at their lap times. So 13.014 was the lap time for Dale Curran in the action sprint tour. Now we'll have a look and see what the 360s can do. Man, Rick Wilson really lifting that left front tire. He threw it into the corner on the inside of Kyle Phillips. It almost stuck too much as he goes up over the cushion in one and two. Ryan Turner just behind him in the Nitro 54 variety. Creative Edge number 15. And that's Corey Turner at this point. I can't help but feel Corey Turner needs a good run. Or wants a good run. I mean, he always wants a good run. But. Let's have a podium finish recently, but I'm sure as a defending champion of the Shriek and Corey would like to find his way back to victory lane here with a new team with Nathan Ackland Racing. And that always takes some time, too, to get adjusted to... A uh, new situation there, and uh, Corey Quick has 12.330. It's about uh, seven tenths of a second quicker than the crate sprints. That set of cars peels off the racetrack in turn number three. And we wait for the next group to roll in off of turn two. Did we lose anybody last night? I don't think we did. Josh Hansen had troubles, but they had that fixed by feature time. Dale Curran, did he make it back out tonight? Yes, he did. Yeah, he was the quickest with the action sprint tour. At 24.360 signed in, and that's what we had last night. We started 23. Did we start 24? We started 25 crates. We ended up with 24 once Josh Hansen made his way out. Yeah. We are at 27 crates right now, which is one up from last night, which is even cooler. Yeah, Josh Robertson, the 11W, who, who did have a starting spot last night, but I don't think that car ever hit the racetrack. Then who's the other one that we have added? Chris Herbison. Oh, okay. It's like a word search. There you go. So 360s making their way out. This is the second group, and these will be the drivers in qualifying heat number two a little bit later on here tonight. A running order tonight will start with the Stingers with their six-lap qualifying heats, and then everyone else will have eight-lap qualifiers. The Action Sprint Tour will, will run second. Thunderstocks third, then the 360 sprints, and we'll conclude tonight with the comp fours. Yeah, we'll, we'll move here after. 
after this uh, session. Sean Evans in the Insta Panels 87X. The 11J is Chris Jones. The Jones Automotive. CarQuest 11J. Yes, weekend Speedway 68 is Aaron Turkey. The JR's Riverside Bait and Tackle 77T of Tyler Paulus. The Vibrant Farms 45. Last night's winner. Always exciting to have a new winner. Nick Sheridan out of Mount Bridges in that black and red 45. Jamie Turner. So the best spot to shoot. And the Charlie B. Honey number 11. So I want you to shoot that way. We could use that audio. <laughs> Evan Reynolds in that Pulp Conan look-alike number 98 machine. Josh Hansen in the 88. Some exciting talent in this series. Some KG veterans. We got a great mix. A little of everything. Little East versus West as well. And we saw last night with the Action Sprint Tour, it was all East in that battle. is really driving with a lot of confidence in that 77T. Gets up over the cushion, does a bit of a wheelie off of turn number two, keeps his foot in the throttle. Turner gone around there in turn number three. Brett going to go up and give him some assistance. Now he's just going to drive by and look at him. <laughs> give him the stink eye. So one more group still to come out. And then I believe Comp Fours will get a quick hot lap session. And then we'll get things underway here on night number two of the Labor Day Classic weekend. Well, guys, over here on the backstretch, we'll give you a look at the creek in the daylight. It actually separates the backstretch from the pit area here at Brighton. And it's, it's free-flowing pretty good. And it runs all the way down. Now, farther down there, we got a bridge where the cars cross to come on the pit road. But just beyond that, where the big bushes are, that's where Rick found the creek. But, yeah, it runs all the way through the property here at Brighton. It's actually a very picturesque on these beautiful nights at Brighton. Look at that, going above and beyond Clinton out there doing some nature walk. Man, I could jump in it right now <laughs> after the day we had. CTMP was like a frying pan over there. But we're good. Excited it's to be back. It's a great day. Great day of racing. Going to be followed by a great night of racing. So we're into the final month or so of the season. Of course, we extended our season this year. We're going to be up at Autumn Colors on Thanksgiving weekend. Of course, we got the Sprint Car Nationals coming up at Oshwegan Speedway. That'll be a huge weekend. The Apple Fest weekend here at Brighton Speedway. So there's still lots to look forward to. We're definitely closer to the tail end of the season than the start of the season. And, Greg, I don't know where it went. Yeah, it's flown right by. It seemed like, especially at Oshwegan, when we had the NASCAR week come up, it... it comes up quickly and then once it's over it's like okay wow we're almost to the end of it you know it, it feels like more mid-season by that point but it's not and and it's uh coming to a close quickly dylan westbrook d dubs in the town line variety 47 x liam martin's out of binbrook in the summertime spray foam insulation number nine Dale Gosselin, our Qu Quebec competitor in the DGR number three. 
Mike Farrell on the four wide design, number 15. Now, is this Nate Jackson or is this Jamie Turner sneaking out for another set? Nate. Nate. Yeah, I can tell by the helmet and the suit that it's not Jamie Turner. They've only doctored the number up on this side of the wing, not the left side of the wing. Alan Downey in the 19D and Clinton, I'm going to put you on the spot and see if you remember. He has just been awarded a post at McMaster University. Uh, Alan Downey is a professor. His focus is Indigenous Studies. He's a brilliant individual, and we get to call him one of ours on the weekend in the 360 Sprint Car. Now quick as 12.189. Two tenths quicker than Corey Turner. And look at that car just dig into the racetrack. He fires it into the corner, making great forward bite out there. I can jump in now, Adam. Uh, yeah. Alan Downey is excited to share this week. He's been named, I read off my phone so I get it right, named a Canada Research Chair at McMaster University. For those unfamiliar with the title, it's one of the highest academic honors you can get in the country. And we're proud to have Alan Downey racing with us. Uh, you know, he was a university professor. And he keeps moving up in the world. And, uh, or we keep dragging him back to the dirt. But either way, it's great to have Alan and some, some great academics here in the sprint cars, guys. Yeah, he's authored books. Uh, just a fascinating individual, a great guy to talk to. He was also a pretty feisty athlete in his day. Well, we've talked this story a lot about Alan Downey, but maybe the folks around here, you know, we met him a lot through iRacing. He was a guy who watched from the stands with his dad for a lot of years, who he lost recently. Then Alan was also an iRacer, became very good at that, and said, hey, I want to try it. And they bought a crate sprint car and just went for it. And uh, now he's up to 360s and doing very well. That's about the size of it from the grandstands to the driver's seat. Bill's Johns Comp 4 is on the racetrack for their hot lap session. Well, it looks as though we may have two of those. I see another group lined up over there on the back stretch. For the Comp 4s tonight, 16 cars in total. 16 for the Stingers. 24 Thunderstocks here tonight. And then we've documented the 360s and Action Sprint Tour 360s with 24 and 27 for the Great Sprints. Final lap in this hot lap session. One more to come, and then we'll get to our qualifying heats. mention for some of the fans watching you know what's the difference between a mini stock and a comp four well for many years Brighton had the comp fours here was the rest of the dirt province had many stocks and we share so many of the divisions like like uh thunder stocks the sprint cars we bring here we also get the canadian modifieds and late models up to uh western ontario or southwestern where we're from we're talking you know uh, humberstone Oshweek, and 
Well, a few years ago, Mark decided to build a mini stock class as well. So we watched the actual ODC style mini stocks, which is common across the other dirt tracks. And this is a Comp 4 division is Brighton centric. It's a lot more um, advanced, if you will, a lot more open to say. So we watched mini stocks last night and the Comp 4 tonight. They are two different divisions and hopefully that gives you a bit of clarity. And we will see some of the mini stock drivers that ran last night intermingling here tonight with the Comp yeah, 4s. Yeah, good point because the Comp 4s are a lot more open, so a mini stock would be less power and less uh, technology, if you will. For example, Nico Hansen from our neck of the woods is up here tonight. He's going to do both nights. So for that explains it a bit for you. So this is it, last hot lap session, and then right into our anthems and we'll get things going here with qualifying heats for the stingers Nico Hansen back again here tonight uh, with his brother Josh Hansen. That crew had a busy night last night. Josh flipped during the hot lap session and I had a lot of help from different teams. I saw on uh, social media today just giving thanks to everyone that pitched in. And it's a great thing about racing. You know, the, the competition on the track is fierce, but you get in the pit area. No one wants to beat another driver because they couldn't make it on the track. Absolutely right. We talk about it quite a bit, and people are just in awe. I talked to a crew member today, Al Haringa, up at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, and he mentioned when Ryan Turner blew up on Friday night, it blew his mind. The first people over to the car were competing pit crews, handing tools and helping out to get that engine swapped over. You, know, you don't ask for help. It's, it's almost always offered. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh just the family community atmosphere with motorsports, and it's a great thing as the checkered flag comes out on this hot lap session for the Bills Johns Comp Fours. And that will set us up to get ready to go racing here on night number two of the Labor Day Classic brought to you by Rock 107 Mystical Distributing and Rapid Rad. So we'll take a quick break here on G-Force TV and be right back with some racing action. Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. I think it just races like a big, big, fast track. If you're not aggressive and you're not willing to make it dicey, you're not passing nobody and you're not going to be fast. Victor Bomberry found his limits. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Welcome back live to Brighton Speedway on G-Force TV, night number two of the Labor Day Classic Weekend, brought to you by Rock 107 Mystical Distributing and Rapid Rad. I'm Greg Kellman with me, Adam Ross down trackside, Clinton Jeffrey. We're ready to go racing on night number two, and boy, oh boy, after last night, I'll tell you. 
Tell you what, I'm ready to go racing. That was some great action on the racetrack. And here we go with the first qualifying of the night for the Quinny Septic Stingers. Going on the pole in car seven, it'll be Josh Toon to the outside, the 47 Josh Sparks. Starting in third is the 93 of Jordan Pickle, lining up fourth in the 27, Kendall Hayes. In the fifth starting spot, the nine of Zach McDonald and the 66 of Ray Davies starts in sixth. Rolling off seventh is Cody Easton in the 29. And going from the eighth spot, the 71, Christine Thompson. White flag displayed next time around. We'll see the first green flag of the night here at Brighton. Don't forget, all night, folks. Those in the stands here, you can check out, go on YouTube and visit GeForce TV. Look that up and you can check out the replays throughout the evening. Some of the great drone shots we'll have from our drone pilot, Abby. He does a phenomenal job. And if you're sitting in the stands wondering, what's that green light following the pack of cars? That's Abby with the drone pilot there. Well, he's not in the drone, but you, you get what I'm saying. Abby's not that small. There's more and more UFO sightings all the time. <laughs> Here we go, first green flag of the night. Night number two is underway. As they pull off down into corner number one here for the Quinnyseptic Stingers, Josh Sparks aboard the 47 is your leader. He'll take him down into turn number three out in front. And lead the way across the start finish line to complete lap number one, the first lap of competition here this evening. Jordan Pickle in that 93 car. Trying to get a run on the outside of the 47 of Josh Sparks down through three and four. They'll click off another lap, this time by four laps left to go. Already they're, they're up the racetrack a little bit, not running the extreme bottom out there. Taking a little bit wider arc. Of course, these are bigger race cars than their smaller Stinger and Comp 4 counterparts that we'll see here tonight. So it's Jordan Pickle out front over Josh Sparks. And then you've got the nine of Zach McDonald running in the third spot. He's being chased down by that 29 of Cody Easton. Josh Toon, the pole sitter, holding down the fifth position. Coming to the white flag for Jordan Pickle off of corner number four. And Pickle doesn't look like the fastest car on the track. Slowing down into the turns, running that bottom groove, a nice solid line. And that's built up a sizable lead on this final lap down the back straightaway. Yeah, being the fastest on the straightaways doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be the quickest car because if you can get through the corners better, you can get the win, just like Jordan Pickle did right there. He'll get the win over Sparks. And then it's the nine machine of Zach McDonald in third, followed by Cody Easton in the 2090s. The seven of Josh Toon finishes in the fifth spot. Then it was the 27 of Kendall Hayes. And the 66 of Ray Davies, and there's the 71 of Christine Thompson concluding the running order for heat race number one. Heat two coming out onto the racetrack for the Quinnyseptic Stingers. Two heats in total for the Stingers here tonight. They'll be followed by the Action Sprint Tour. Thunderstocks, 360 sprints, and then the Comp 4s. Lineup for heat number two on the pole, the 31. That'll be Billy O'Hara tonight to the outside. Lightning Tom Cole in the sixth. Sam Whaley lines up third in the 88. Kevin Much in the 14 starts in fourth. Chris Johnson in the 68 will be fifth. In the sixth starting spot, Dylan Barker in the 03. Nicole DeVoe in the 95 starts seventh. And in the eighth and final spot, Alex Woods in the 99. Used to be a lot of Pontiacs in this division over the years. See a Ford Taurus out there. You don't see them very no. often. I'll put my microphone back in front of my mouth. It wasn't, wasn't doing a lot of good up in my hairline. It's yeah. probably doing you plenty of good. <laughs> it's like he's not even here. <laughs> 
Here we go, second qualifying heat underway for the Quintiseptic Stingers. And Tom Cole right in the middle is going to have some company to the outside. Kevin Much will make it three wide into one. Much up on the high groove, carrying a big head of steam down the back straightaway. He'll lead the way and drive away down the back stretch on lap number one. The field rolls through three and four. It's all Kevin Much out in front. In that second spot now is the 0-3 of Dylan Barker. Started back in sixth up to the second position, and that's the Ford Taurus there. Have you driven a Ford lately? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Dylan Barker has, and he's got that thing hooked up. So we could call that car Barker's Beauty. Barker's Beauty, there you go. In our honor of the now late Bob Barker. Came so close. I, I Did you see that, Mio? I was going to bring that up. So close to 100 without going, going over. over. <laughs> Kevin Much in control of this one over the 0-3 of Dylan Barker. And you've got the 99 of Alex Wood who started in the eighth spot now, challenging for the runner-up position. Yeah, Woods with a good launch on that heat race. That whole outside row seemed to fire off well, get up on the high side of the racetrack and make some advances. But now struggling to get around Barker gonna pitch it down into turn number three these cars obviously a handful to drive you can see these drivers having to work pretty hard behind the wheel out there final time down the back stretch for your leader Kevin Much a straightaway advantage over this battle for the second spot as they come through three and four for the final time Much will get the win the line for the second spot Barker going to hang on over Woods. Sam Whaley in that fourth spot. And then it was the 88 of Sam Whaley, the 31 at the line of Billy O'Hara over Tom Cole, and the 68 of Chris Johnson. So that will conclude qualifying for the Quinny Septic Stingers. And that will call upon now the action sprint tour presented by Pinty's, the national tour, back here again tonight. Matt Billings, the winner. Last night, Adam Turner finished second, and Matthew Barge third in the A-Main last night. All eastern Ontario and Quebec area drivers on the podium last night. So we'll see if the Western drivers can, can get back at them here this evening. It's time for them to show up and compete here tonight. Adam Turner, as far as I know, just competing in the one division here this evening. But three second place finishes. I know we didn't come up with a win, and we would have liked to see him at least get one of them. But that's a pretty remarkable accomplishment to get second in those three divisions. On one hand, it's remarkable and so hard to do. On the other hand, you picture as a young boy, did he lay in bed dreaming of <laughs> finishing runner-up three times in one night? You can, you've, got, you've got to weigh yeah. them both. I'm with you. It's a great accomplishment. But I'm sure just one first-place trophy would have felt great for Adam Turner last night. Let's see if we can get it done here tonight. Here's how the lineup in heat race number one, and there's some big names in this one. On the pole in the 87 out of Picton, it's Andrew Hennessy starting second from Pierreville, Quebec. The 19 is Matthew Bardier. Third from Brockville, the 13 is Evan Reynolds. And fourth from Brockville, the 52 is Matt Billings. Fifth from London, the 19M is Will March. And sixth from Alexandria, the 51L is General Lee, Lee Ladisseur. Seventh from St. Catharines, the 71 is Mike Bowman. Eighth from Brantford, the 88 is Lance Erskine. And ninth from Brockville, the double zero is Ryan Poole. There's no such thing as a weak heat with the Action Sprint Tour because there's just so much talent from front to back racing with us. And the talent comes from so many different areas. That's the incredible thing about the crate sprints more than I think any other division is the diversity of where these drivers have come from, whether it be dirt modified racers, whether it be TQ Midget racers, 
you know, there's a variety, even Adam Turner coming from the late model division, that type of driver as well. Now, Adam has has history in modifieds as well, but, but the late models was always the, the Turner family thing. And it, there's so many different drivers, and they were all good drivers from where they came from. And ignorance is no excuse, Greg, but what did Matthew Bardier do before he came out and won a championship in the crate sprints i don't i don't know I where don't he know. came from but all of yeah. a sudden here's a name that I'm, I'm just not familiar with that one but boy oh boy is he ever good i guess i always just assumed he came from sportsman or modifieds in quebec right that would be a i assume probably a valid <laughs> i assumed the same thing but they do have some neat classes like the speedsters yeah. and such that you could jump out of. and Well, there's also the lightning sprints down that way as well, which is an entry-level division, so. It's early in the night. You know how early in the night it is, Greg? How early in the night is it, Adam? Brett Meineker's still smiling. <laughs> and dry. He's going to get his hip waders. <laughs> So this first qualifying heat taking shape. Everyone getting in line and ready to go. Andrew Hennessy at 87. He's got a ton of laps around this track. Of course, a multi-time uh, Canadian modified winner and a champion here at Brighton Speedway. Plenty of wins in the late model as well. And whatever they did a couple of weeks ago, he made a comment on Facebook that they thrashed on the car and went up to Merrittville and finished second to Mike Bowman last week. And, and uh, last night, very solid again, was the 87. Absolutely was. Did you see Ryan Poole just work his car left and right? He almost tipped it over on the front stretch. No, I didn't. Former modified driver as well, Ryan Poole, as we come to the green flag at the first qualifying heat of the night for the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's. And you see a lead him into turn number one, but Matt Billings quickly to the inside in that 52. Matt Billings will take the lead on this opening lap. Last night's winner right there to the point. He's got Matthew Barge now working on the back end of the 87 of Hennessy. Meanwhile, a little bit behind that as well is Lee Latticer trying to work his way. He's in the fifth spot. He's feeling pressure from Bowman and Lance Erskine. Billings out in front, growing that lead. Hennessy settled into second, Bardier third, and then the battle is on. Evan Reynolds holding down the fourth spot, but behind him, it is crowded. Things happen fast here at Brighton Speedway, that's for sure. Tight confines, and it's halfway home already. The, lip, the laps click off really quickly. Matt Billings picking up where he left off last night in that 52 machine. As he set sail down the back stretch in that machine. Ryan Poole just about got two for one there. He went around Will March going into turn one. Almost got Lance Erskine in turn two. Going to try him again here in the fourth turn further up. Lee Latasur doing everything he can to try to get around Evan Reynolds. But so far, Reynolds has been up to the task. Latticer continuing to work on him. Poole and Erskine going at it as well. There's your leader, Matt Billings, off the corner to the white flag here in heat race number one for the Action Sprint Tour. Latticer, boy, did he ever just snooker the 13 machine of Evan Reynolds. Pulled right up alongside him and then dropped the anchor going into three. Reynolds drove too hard into the corner, slid up. Lee Latticer drove right on by in that 51. Checkered flag flies. Matt Billings with the win over Hennessy, Bardier, Latasur, Evan Reynolds, Mike Bowman, Ryan Poole, Lance Erskine, and Will Marsh. We're going to take a break. When we come back, it'll be time for next heat race in the Action Sprint Tour. Early man discovered oh. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. 
Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pasta sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... to TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. TKC will recycle your piece of... car? Got a piece of... car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. Back live at Brighton Speedway, night number two, the Labor Day Classic Weekend Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's getting ready for qualifying heat number two. Adam Ross has the starting lineup. Here's how they roll off on the pole in the 77E from Oshwegan. It's Ashton Van Every. Second from Kitchener, the 50LS is Adrian Staley. Rolling off third from Oshwegan, the 28T is Cameron Thompson. Fourth from Ottawa, the M52, is Mark Supernit. Starting fifth from Bowmanville, the 31C, is Dale Curran. On the outside of row three from Mallorytown, the 17, is Chris Herbison. Seventh out of Cherry Valley, the 9, is Adam Turner. And starting eighth from Listwell, the 97, is Sheldon Bender. Rounding out the field from St. Catharines, the 2S, is Al Slate. Nine cars make up the starting grid for heat race number two. Had a quick look. Matthew Bargier looks like he did run in the lightning sprints before moving up to the crate sprint car division. And they're, they're a scaled down sprint car. I've seen them once at Cornwall. Scaled down sprint car, much smaller wing on the very tiny wings on the top. And uh, looks like that's where Matthew Bargier got his start in the sprint car ranks. Well, it must be a decent place to start because it served him very well. That's a cool camera as we're riding on board one of the push vehicles. Where is that camera mounted? In oh, Jack's hands. Jack's hand. There you go. Jack wants to send a shout out to Grandpa Gary. Hope you're here watching and feeling better. Pops, our dad is a bit under the weather, but he's on the mend. He's still pretty feisty, Clint. Yeah, I'd like to see you and Gary go at it one of these days. Uh, I feel like we do. <laughs> you do through me. I'm stuck in the middle. No, oh, well wishes for Gary. Get better. Get back out here. Dale Kerr, and there he is, quickest in hot laps in that CN Prado's Veggie Shack, number 31. Those are two sponsors you and I need to visit, I think. My eating today was not anywhere near the Veggie Shack or CN Proto's quality. You know, Greg, this season, is just, like, I'm working hard to blow up like a <laughs> I had such a great off-season, lost a lot of weight. I found it. All I needed was summertime. <laughs> Ashton Van Avery, one of the happiest young men you will ever meet. I still need to grab some of his shirts. He wants to give away some shirts at Oshwegan. Remind me next time. Adrian Staley on the outside in that 50 LS as we work towards the green flag and heat race number two. They roll down into corner one for the first time. Staley and Thompson side by side. Staley will pull ahead down the back stretch and give chase to the leader. Van Every out in front of a few car lengths. Cam Thompson running in the third spot. I don't even know how to describe those colors. I guess it's yellow and blue and black number 28, but a unique look, and he's under challenge from Chris Herbison. And Chris Herbison, there's a modified standout there, doing his uh, best in a sprint car. This is one of his uh, few starts. I know he started later in, or uh, late in the year at Brockville in a few races in that great sprint. Here he is, giving that machine a good ride. Van Every holding a pretty wheel. Adrian Staley running in second, which is exactly where he started. He'll look to the inside in three and four. But Van Every really planted to the racetrack well as they reach the halfway point of this heat. Van Every, Staley, Thompson, Herbison, and Curran. Right now the top five is Adam Turner. Works on Al Slate looking for the sixth. Three to go. 
The top three have been this distance apart. Well, Staley's a little bit closer now than he was earlier, but it's been a very familiar top three this entire race. They spread out, they close in, but nobody able to make a move until now. Cam Thompson sweeps to the outside of Staley in the 50. Staley going to fire back on the bottom of the racetrack. One year ago, Ashton Van Emery had a phenomenal Labor Day weekend here at Brighton Speedway. He's doing again, leading this one, but Cam Thompson's going to try and steal it away in the final corners. Thompson going to send it into the outside of three and four, but Van Emery was running the same line. He'll win over Thompson. Staley, Herbison, Turner, Curran, Slate, Bender, and Supernet. That'll put heat number two into the record books. One more, I believe, to come still for the action sprint tour. Tom three will roll it across the scales. And Ashton Van Every picks up the win, the Nitro 54 variety. 77E. I call the finish like that as much to test myself to make sure my mind is sharp and I know who's driving every car as much as to call the finish. I think I got all of them right that time. Nudge me if I don't. I wasn't listening you, you to you. You don't listen to anything. <laughs> Maybe the dinner bell. <laughs> Never miss that. Third group heading out, and uh, Johnny Miller in that 20 machine. Back half of the season, he had a wreck at Oshweken, and... Rebuilt that car, new scheme on it and everything, and it's been a fresh start, and he's been running very strong, the Iceman. Uh, back to the form we're used to seeing him in. Yeah, I would agree with that, Greg. He's really looked good the last few outings. Hasn't The luck hasn't been on his side, but it's the one thing about luck. You know, when you have a lot of speed, it takes the edge off a little bit, but with the season winding down, there's another one who'd love to get out there and, and have a podium finish. Guys, I just watched Cam Thompson come across the scales, and he's still pumping his fist all the way back to the pit area. Another youngster who was making his, you know, his start here in crates this year. He was most recently in what we would call a bone stock or a pure stock, which would be kind of similar to a stinger car here on the dirt. So it's crazy to see Cam make those gains, and one heck of an eye racer as well, and that's got to help him out here in his sprint car career. He's just a really good racer. You know what impresses me about Cam Thompson, Clinton? You can see his focus, even from outside of the car, and I see it when he's running pure stocks, bone stocks, these sprint cars. He, he has a plan. He's out there. You don't see him get worked up. If he does inside the car, he hides it very well. It's a good flag man, too. What's that, the relationship with Don Thompson Jr., Adam? Because they won the NASCAR race today. They are half-brothers. I, I think that's correct. So Samantha will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but what a cool deal for Jordan Hill to step outside for his brother-in-law and say, hey, man, I think you got this. I'll be your crew chief. You're going to drive it. And Jordan, I think, is having a great time celebrating the success of young Cammy here. Yeah, and he works for his other brother, Dennis Thompson, with Thompson Signs, or at least he was. And I know Dennis Thompson surprised him earlier this year with the rap that was on that 28 car. So a few interesting stories about Cam Thompson and the 28 and the family lineage. So to, to put it simply, Clinton, both Don Thompson Jr. and Cam Thompson's father is Don Thompson Sr. He race number three, going to line up like this. On the bowl out of Roslyn, the 4K is Jamie K. Starting second from Wayne Fleet, the 85C is Cam McKinnon. Third from Joyceville in the 15, it's April Wilson. And fourth from Richmond, Quebec, the 55 is Jeffrey Weir. Fifth from Oshwegan, the 9C is Brian Danicoke. Sixth from Mosley, the 3S is Austin Rose. Seventh from Port Perry in the 4B, it's Four Barrel Daryl, Daryl Paltier. How was it the two drivers with nicknames started right behind each other last night as well? Starting eighth from Six Nations in the number 20, it's the Iceman, Johnny Miller. Rounding out the field from Keister Center, the 11W is Josh Robertson. Green flag up in the air for the third and final qualifying heat for the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's. And jumping out to the lead right there, Cam McKinnon. But here comes April Wilson into the second spot. April Wilson looked pretty sporty in the practice session. She gets a little bit loose off of turn four. Maintains her line to the bottom of the racetrack. 
She'll hang on to that second spot, getting a really good run off of turn two. April with a ton of laps here in the 360 sprint cars over the years of Brighton Speedway. And here she is right now running in that second spot behind Cam McKinnon. Great run for Cam. He's looking steady out there. And another young driver that's just learning his craft in the crate sprints and uh, getting better and better every race. Johnny Miller putting a move on Jeffrey Ware for the fourth spot. Miller on the inside. Ware up on the high side in that 55 is Austin Rose trying to close in on April Wilson, but she's got all sorts of giddy up off of turn two. Halfway home in this third and final qualifier, McKinnon out in front of her Wilson. Here comes Rose Miller, and we're right now in the 55. He'll go around Miller, trying to catch the back of Rose now. Austin Rose moves up the racetrack a little on the backstretch and then sort of no man's land into turn three. That allows Ware to go by on the outside. Johnny Miller going to look to the inside as April Wilson with a bit of a hiccup in turn one. That keeps that pack tightly bunched. Two to go for Cam McKinnon. Checked out as four barrel Darrell will take it to the pit area in the 4B. Jeffrey Ware around the outside of April Wilson. He'll pick up that second spot. Now Austin Rose going to try as the white flag flies. Johnny Miller right there as well as they battle for the third spot. Final time down the back stretch for Cam McKinnon in the 85. See Ware right now in the second spot over Rose. Checkers out. Give the win to McKinnon over Weir. Rose, Miller in fourth, fifth is Wilson, sixth will go to Nanakoke, seventh at the line is Kay, and then Robertson will complete the cars on the track with four-barrel Daryl Pelche coming uh, up short there with a the DNF. So that will conclude qualifying for the action sprinter presented by Pinties, and we'll move on now to the Thunderstock division. Little fun fact for you, Greg. Nicknames get used more when they rhyme. When was the last time you said Daryl without starting it with four barrel? <laughs> True. Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. Ready to go with their qualifying heats here tonight. And they'll have three in total, 24 cars here this evening. First qualifier on the pole will be the 0-3 of Justin Ramsey. And to his outside, the 72 of Doug Anderson. Starting third in the 27, Tory Pope. And from the fourth spot, the sixth car of Bill O'Hara. Starting in fifth, Patrick Easton in the 88. Mike Lucas in the 74 starts sixth. Cody Driscoll in the 76 will line up in the seventh spot. And Josh Black in the nine will start in the eighth position. Green flag set to come out next time by Justin Ramsey. Crawling off of turn number two down the back straightaway. We'll get there. We're almost there. Will they? Do you promise? <laughs> wow. They crawled to the start of this one, and we are underway of the first qualifying heat. For the Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks, Ramsey leads them down into one with Anderson in tow. Anderson up on the high side. Ramsey with a good jump off the bottom of turn two. Now Anderson going to drop down to the inside of the racetrack. Is third back through sixth in a tight battle off the fourth turn. Easton with problems in the 88. Gets things gathered up here on the front stretch in that uh, classic Bobby Allison yeah. scheme. Well, his problem was Bill O'Hara. He had a move going to the inside. O'Hara got a little loose off of four. And that caused Patrick Easton to have to check up, get a little bit squirrely. He seems to have corrected things now, but he ran out of racetrack there in turn two. He's going to have to start all over again. A few laps there for Easton in the 88. Meanwhile, out front, it's all... Justin Ramsey and Doug Anderson. Then we see the battle here for the third spot between Black and Lucas. Black on the bottom in the nine. Lucas on the outside in the 74. This time by, it'll be four complete and four to go. Still some great bite around the bottom of the racetrack. It makes it difficult to work the middle if you're trying to pass a car that handles fairly well. You either got to go to the extreme outside and find the grip up there by the cushion or try to wait patiently until the car ahead of you comes off the bottom of the track. 
Rams in Anderson continue to be one two now Easton slow on the front stretch I think he's had enough <laughs> he got into it with O'Hara again this time he headed towards the outside wall at least there's variety in the mishaps some to the infield some to the wall I'll bet you he'd be ready for a Miller like soon <laughs> Leader catching the 27 of Tory Pope with the white flag coming out. Ramsey leading over Anderson. Straight away back in the third spot's black as he's disposed of Mike Lucas, who's back fourth position. Patrick Easton going to call it a heat race. He peels off into the pits. Down through three and four for the final time. Justin Ramsey going to take the win. Doug Anderson rolls home in the second spot. Third going to go to Josh Black with Mike Lucas finishing fourth. Rounding out the top five is Bill O'Hara. First of three, Brighton Automotive Thunderstock heats completed. Two to come as a roll across the bridge over there in corner number two. Great shot down the back stretch from the uh, concrete blocks down there, the wall cam. Well, Justin Ramsey pulls up onto the scales, and look at this sign they got at the scales, guys. It says, scales are official weight. It does not matter what it weighs at home. You know what I mean? Drivers come through the tech area and say, well, at home I was legit. Yeah, I love it. At home I weigh 250 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Heat number two lining up on the back stretch. On the pole, the 08, Angie Kirby to the outside. Deion Riley in the 46. Brock Gregory in the 86 will start in the third position with Caitlin O'Blenis in the 16 starting in the fourth spot. Tyler French in the zero starts fifth. Six will be Dave Barrett in the 97. Corey White in the 19 starts seventh. And starting in the 18th position, I've got it down as Austin Reed driving tonight instead of Jeff Humphrey. And I think by the fire suit I just saw, that is Austin Reed. Okay. And I've been asked to give a shout out to Sean Gregory and Colson Gregory and everyone else that helped put the one, number one car together for Brandon Gregory tonight. Had a blown motor from last week and they're excited to get back out here this weekend. And we'll see them in the next qualifying heat. I was a little premature there. That's all right. Better early than late. Or never. Off they go into corner number one with Angie Kirby scooting out in front off the drop of the green flag. Here comes Tyler French. In that fourth spot, boy, he's got a hornet's nest right behind him in the zero. As the 86 on the inside there of Brock Gregory putting the pressure on Angie Kirby. Boy, oh boy, what a tightly bunched battle. Angie Kirby out in front, but I don't think for long as Brock Gregory up the inside. He'll take the lead. French going to follow through for the second spot. So it's Gregory French. Now one and two as they work it down the back stretch another time. Corey White making his way towards the front now as well. Up to that third position. Started back in seventh. As did uh, Dave Barrett started back in the sixth spot. He's up to the fourth position. So some comers and goers, goers here in the early laps. Trending in the right direction earlier on in these Thunderstock heats. Brock Gregory holding off Tyler French. French is just so fast in that zero machine. But Brock Gregory so far able to fend him off. Deion Riley got around down on the front stretch here. Stirs up a little bit of dust, but we stay green as Tyler French is all over the back of the 86 of Gregory as they head down into one and two. It's right there on that back bumper, not touching, but uh, here they go down into three. Close call there. Every lap, it looks like Gregory is driving a little bit deeper into the turn, and that forces the car to slide up the racetrack. Now, they both have the same sponsor on the race car, so I'm going to jump out on a limb and say these are teammates out there, which I always found made it more likely for there to be contact. <laughs> it's just the way it goes, right? I'll help you fix it this week, buddy. <laughs> White flag is out. Tyler French to the point in the zero now as Corey White will look to the inside of the 86 of Gregory. Barrett hanging with them as well. Four-car breakaway at the front. 
French down into three and four for the final time. Checkers in the air. Tyler French will take the win over Brock Gregory, Corey White, Dave Barrett. Jeff Humphrey rounds out the top five. Caitlin O'Blenis, Angie Kirby, and Dion Riley going to round out the field. One more qualifier still to come for the Brighton Automotive Thunder Stocks, and then we'll move to the 360 Sprints. They'll be followed by the Comp 4s. I just got a note, you know, not really super private, but Cam Thompson, hey, thanks for the kind words. What, does he listen while he's driving? Maybe. Can he run the stream in your helmet? <laughs> be on a 30-second delay or something. It'd be <laughs> really annoying. Starting on the pole in this third and final qualifier, Dylan Riley in the 45. Brandon Gregory in the one. Starts in the second spot. Cole McEwen in the 11 will roll off third. Fourth, the 23 of Doug May. Chris Hackett in the 06 starts fifth. Ricky Phillips in the seven will start in the sixth spot. The 18 of Kyle Anderson starts seventh. And Adam Switzer is who I have in the 46X at the back, but I don't know as though that is correct. out as they pile on down into turn number one. Wow. Brock Gregory gets quickly down to the inside of the racetrack. That's the car with a fresh power plant under the hood. I shouldn't say fresh. We don't know if it was brand new, but we know it's not the one that blew up at Cornwall. Dylan Riley going to lead that lap, glued to the bottom. Gregory goes into turn number one a little bit higher, cuts underneath on the exit of the corner, and Brock Gregory going to sneak into turn three with the top spot. Gregory brings him off a corner four, two laps on the board. That 45 of uh, Dylan Riley giving chase. The 11 of Cole McEwen holding in tight, and then it's a bit of a ways back now to that 18 of Kyle Anderson in the fourth spot. It's a good looking car, that Kyle Anderson number 18. Just clean, right? Yeah, clean lines clean. on it. Blue interior as well on that green, or on that uh, orange looks good. Halfway home, this time by the start-finish line for Gregory over Riley and McEwen. And I'll tell you what, the 18 car beginning to catch. Kyle Anderson starting to catch the top three. Oof. Little issue there in turn two for Cole McEwen in the 11 machine. That slows him down slightly. And I don't know that Kyle Anderson needed a lot of help. He was coming one way or another as Anderson closes in to make it a three-car battle for that second spot. I don't think anybody's going to touch Brock Gregory out in front. But here comes Kyle Anderson. He'll look to the outside into turn three. Two laps left to go for the leader. Anderson is right there in the back bumper of McEwen as they come down the front stretch. To the outside goes Anderson. McEwen continues to work the bottom lane. Anderson's got a good run. Gives him a little poke off a of corner two. Anderson not wanting to scrub off any speed, but got into the back bumper just a little bit of McEwen. Now McEwen's picked up the wick, working on Dylan Riley as we enter the final lap. It's all Gregory down the back stretch, but the battle for the second spot is where it's at with Riley holding it down. McEwen that third position checkers out for Gregory and at the line for second looks like it's going to be Riley Riley going to hang on to the spot over McEwen Kyle Anderson going to settle for fourth but he made it a show Ricky Phillips fifth Adam Schweitzer with his lap on the sixth lap then Chris Hatt, I believe bringing up the rear let's take a quick break before it's time to get back to some sprint car racing with the 360 sprints Coming up next. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pasta sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. 
Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Early man discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Introducing the fleet lineup by CargoEase. Our commercial and Titan series slide come with weight capacities of 1,500 to 3,000 pounds and features HDPE Ultra Ply Deck, a quarter inch rubber mat, eight inch aluminum side rails, a patented spring release T-handle and L-hook fasteners. This is the CargoEase fleet lineup. Welcome back to Brighton Speedway for night number two of the Labor Day Classic weekend as the 360 Sprint Car is brought to you by Lons We Do. Out on to the racetrack for their first of three qualifying heats. Starting on the pole in heat race number one will be Kevin Pauls in the 46. He's from St. Catharines. His outside, the Joyceville Jet, Rick Wilson in the 42W. Rolling off third in the 15T, that'll be Ryan Turner from Dunville. And going from the fourth spot, the Oshwikin Flyer, Glenn Styers in the zero. Starting fifth tonight, out of Picton in the 84, it's Tyler Rand. And last night's runner-up starts sixth, the 21K of Kyle Phillips out of Grand Island, New York. Starting seventh, out of Freelton, the 12 double D, Darren Dryden. And his dancing partner in row number four, the 17X, Corey Turner from Tilsonburg. So eight cars, eight laps the distance for the lawns we do, 360 sprint cars. How many feature wins are in this heat? In, in all classes, wh whatever classes they've, they've run. Boy, oh boy. Well, a ton for Rick Wilson, obviously. Quite a few for Darren Dryden between TQ Midgets and Vintage Modifieds and Go-Karts. 50 sprint car wins for Glenn Styers alone. Ryan Turner's racking them up at an alarming rate, plus all of his success in Thunderstocks as well. Same with Corey Turner. And I'm not sure where Kyle Phillips was before sprint cars, but I'm sure he had to cut his teeth doing something. Uh, I believe Kyle Phillips has a win. But he won uh, here. Yeah. In the wingless as well, I believe. Oh, is that right? At Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. So I believe Kyle Phillips has a wingless win as well. At least one, maybe. Now, Kevin Pauls, I believe his racing career started... In 360. In a sprint car. <laughs> and he has not won one yet, but, but I have great respect for the fact that he jumped into it. I wouldn't say he really struggled. He just wasn't fast. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not easy to do. Uh, but boy, oh boy, over time, he has improved and improved and improved to the point where he can run with the pack. He's, he's still not a front runner yet, but we've seen him have some great drives in that 46. And he'll start from the pole in this one as we come to the green flag. Pauls and Wilson thunder down into corner number one. Pauls got the launch and then kicked the car sideways under acceleration, so he lost a bit of speed. That allowed Rick Wilson to pull around the high side. Wilson going to lead lap number one. Here goes Ryan Turner looking to the inside for the second spot, but Kevin Paul's going to hold him off in that 46. There goes Ryan Turner scooting by. Kevin Paul's into the second spot trying to track down the Joyceville Jet. You can tell the throttle's working properly tonight. Rick Wilson usually just has it mashed to the floorboard, but at least when he needs to lift a little, it's working this evening. You're not wrong there as Rick Wilson flying around the high side in that 42 W. Look at this battle for the third spot. Kyle Phillips, Darren Dryden, Kevin Pauls, Glenn Styers closing in. So is Corey Turner. Great battle through this one. This is a difficult qualifying heat. In fact, all three will be tonight, but nonetheless, 
Tough heat to move through. Here comes Ryan Turner trying to get a run on the Joyceville Jet. He'll slam it down into corner three. Side by side off the fourth turn. Rick Wilson with the advantage. Darren Dryden went around the outside of Kyle Phillips. Two to go this time by Turner. Edges ahead just a little bit, but Wilson's got that outside line working for him. He'll lead the lap again. You're not going to make Rick Wilson lift. Right, and Ryan Turner making that aggressive move there. He'd love to be able to clear him and slide him, just can't quite get the forward drive, and Rick Wilson able to come off the corner with the advantage. And I'll tell you what, if you're going to slide Rick Wilson, you better do it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Here we come to the checkered flag off a corner four. The Joyceville Jet gets it done. The fans love that one. Ryan Turner comes home second. Darren Dryden to finish third. Kyle Phillips fourth. Corey Turner fifth. Then it's Tyler Rand, Kevin Pauls, and Glenn Styers. Well, folks, those here in attendance, how about that? The Joyceville Jet gets it done like days of old. I don't think weight is a concern for Rick Wilson. He's a sizable fella. Jeff Dernan down there. One of our action sprint tour officials on the scene. Group two getting pushed out onto the racetrack for their qualifying heat. Another beautiful night here at Brighton Speedway. Labor Day Classic, always a great one. You never know what kind of weather you're going to get, but we've been treated with excellent weather this weekend and things working out. I don't talk about the weather anymore when I come to Brighton. I try <laughs> yeah, not to. You had a run there for a while, I didn't you? I was the rain man. <laughs> All right, heat race number two will line up like this. From the pole out of Lafroy in the 25, the Wiley one, Warren Mahoney. Starting in the second spot from Picton in the 11J, that'll be Chris Jones. Starting third from Oshwick in the 77T, Tyler Paulus. And lining up to his outside in the fourth position, that'll be Jamie Turner out of Caster Center. Fifth starting spot belongs to Sean Evans from Scotland in the 87X. And his outside, Josh Hansen from Beamsville in the 88H. Nick Sheridan, last night's winner from Mount Bridges in the 45, starts seventh. And Evan Reynolds from Brockville in the 98 will start in the eighth spot. Eight laps the distance again for heat race number two. For the lawns we do, 360 sprint cars. Tyler Powell, 77T, springs to life here. Coming down the front straightaway, that young man has improved quite a bit. A lot of that is, of course, with the help of Kevin Lovey's as well, turning wrenches on those race cars. Nick Sheridan hasn't had a lot of sleep this weekend. He was over at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park working with the legendary motor car team. Had a tough outing today, Gary Clute. Got involved in a wreck when Andrew Ranger blew his motor. A huge fireball out of the 27, oiled down the racetrack, and Clute had nowhere to go and piled it into the tire wall. Well, this heat lineup ready to go, so next time by we'll see the green flag and the second qualifying heat. Warren Mahoney, Chris Jones on the front row. A couple of veteran drivers from multiple disciplines. Warren Mahoney, a longtime TQ midget campaigner. Now a sprint car racer. Chris Jones, a former modified driver. Now a sprint car racer. I think it's fair to call them a couple of blue-collar racers as well, Greg. That they are. Hard-working guys. And here comes Chris Jones jumping out to the early lead. Boy, he got a... Phenomenal start. So did Tyler Paulus. He'll jump up to the second spot. Yeah, Tyler Paulus with a bold move off the start to the inside. Now Jamie Turner to the inside of Warren Mahoney. They'll battle for the third spot. 
Chris Jones hauling down the back stretch. He's got a few sprint car wins under his belt in that 11J. He'll lead it across the stripe on lap number two with Palace in tow. Here comes the battle for third. It's Jamie Turner digging on the bottom, trying to get by the Wiley one, Warren Mahoney. I love what Turner's doing. He's backing up the corner, really checking up to the center to try to get a good drive off as we've got one around there in turn number four. A caution flag will fly for Evan Reynolds. And that Paul Pacona number 98. So Jamie Turner not really backing up the corner, but kind of checking up a little as he goes in. So you see Warren Mahoney from the right from the entry of the corner kind of drive away, but then Turner able to close that gap because he can keep the car down to the bottom. That's how I want to go to the races, Greg. Just someone carry me around. Carrying you. I want to watch it. Who's going to carry you? Oh, the we're living I in mean, a Clint and I carry every night, but... But, um, bum. I wish I was that strong. <laughs> so Clint tonight has to check in at least every five minutes because he's already said he may get caught sleeping on the benches back there by the scales. Okay, yes. We're going to have some regular wellness checks for Clint and Jeffrey. Wait a minute. We got back here, I went to work, you went to bed. 20 minutes before we went on the air, I had to shake you out of the bed and say, we're on the air in 25 minutes. That's where you were? Yes. It's because I had to drive back from CTMP. <laughs> it's a long drive. Yeah, an hour and 10 is tough, man, when you get to be that age. How did things go on the uh, trailer last night? Is that all just oh. stay in the trailer? Clint's in the executive suite. He's, it's hard to imagine both of us in the same spot. <laughs> who puts the 300-pounder in the top bunk? <laughs> the guy who gets here first. <laughs> green flag back out, everyone. Single file past that restart cone. Clean and green. As Sean Evans scoots by Jamie Turner into the four spot. So Jamie's going to have to go back to work, try and get that position back. Nick Sheridan not really having a lot of luck moving forward in this one. Neither is Josh Hansen. Is Sean Evans going to get a run to the inside of Warren Mahoney? Here goes Sheridan, and he just sends it down into three. We'll get by Jamie Turner. He's going to have to improve on this, so I believe again tonight it will look like the top three to the redraw here. So, uh, well, Sheridan picks off another one. He's got one more to go. He's got a little ways to go if he wants to get there and not a lot of time to do it. And Sean Evans has some good giddy up in that 87X. Look at Tyler Paulus closing in on Chris Jones. One lap left to go. Paulus is right there in the tail tank. He'll look down low in corner number one. They'll come off a two. Jones a little bit quicker there. They'll sail it to three and four one more time. Up to the high side goes Tyler Paulus. He's not going to be able to do it. Jones for the win over Paulus. Evan, Sheridan, Mahoney, Turner, Hansen. And Reynolds. How about Tyler Palace there? Big win for Chris Jones, and that's a feel-good story there. Hometown regular Chris Jones with Tyler Palace. Boy, that was some confident driving. That's I think right. that's the best way I could say it. And I think that's something that, that these drivers experience when they come to Bright. Look, he's, he's cutting his teeth this week, and this week is very, very fast. You come here to Brighton, and I think... That it's just easier for them to drive the car hard here. I don't know what the difference is, but I will mention I can't throw Clint under the bus. I chose the top bunk. I had, I didn't have my choice of the executive suite at, nope. the, at the front of the RV, but I chose that top bunk. I'll bet the top bunk didn't choose you. <laughs> uh. Uh. I noticed Jack was on the bottom bunk, and as soon as I had moved to the top, <laughs> what? Jack moved to the couch. <laughs> Smart move, Jack. <laughs> it's true. I'm not taking that chance either. <laughs> and, of course, Abby slept in the back of his Yugo. I don't know what the heck oh, he drives, but it's... Oh, he didn't end up it's... in the trailer? No. no! He tried to get him in there. He put his mattress in the back of his Toyota Tercel or whatever. He slept in the hatchback. I said, man, we got floor space. We got beds. We got shower. We got IC. He's like, nah, I like my hatchback. <laughs> wow. Hey, you know, there, there's just some people. He's like an artiste, right? He has to cuddle with his drones. 
<laughs> that could get dangerous. <laughs> Those blades spin quickly. Yeah, as he buzzes me for a haircut right now. <laughs> I'll just shut up about the drone. Yeah, quit droning on. But um boom. That was good. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. That was I'm, good. I'm here all night. <laughs> Trying the steak. We know you've been here all weekend. <laughs> My therapist says I'm doing much better. My coping mechanisms are solid. I'm not doing very well with my Dale Carnegie courses, but my therapist says I'm improving. Now your therapist is seeing a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, third and final qualifying heat for the lawns we do. 360 sprint cars. Dale Goslin will line up on the pole. In the 3G to his outside, Mike Farrell from London in the 15. Starting third from Brantford, car number 10, downtown Mitch Brown into his outside, the 47X from Scotland, D-dubs, Dylan Westbrook. Lining up fifth is the 18 of Nathan Jackson to his outside from Oshwikin, the 68 of Aaron Turkey. Starting seventh from Binbrook in the nine, the live wire, Liam Martin. And going from... The eighth and final spot, the 19D, Allen Downey from Hamilton. There he is, Adam. The Hornet or Bee or Wasp or whatever that is. That'd be a Wasp, wouldn't it? I don't it's know. like he's ready to pounce on me. What did I do? Isn't that like illegal to kill these things now? <laughs> do I look like a cop? <laughs> Here, you make them mad. I've already got one bite. At our home track, we have a bottle of Raid in the tower. You can't see out the window because there's so much overspray, <laughs> but the bug population is fairly limited. <laughs> Get him. Here, Wasp. Oh, you did it. No, you didn't. Yeah. You better get him. Here we go to the green flag and race number three. Dale Goslin leads the way down the back stretch. Dylan Westbrook in tow that second spot, fighting with Mitch Brown, and then you've got five cars. Oh, Liam Martin almost lost it up in four. Nice save by Martin. It cost him a little bit of time out there as Alan Downey works the outside of Mike Farrell. Out in front, though, Dale Goslin hanging on to the lead. Dylan Westbrook trying to close the gap. Goslin set sail down the back stretch with Westbrook trying to catch the leader. It's been a busy weekend for D Dubs after the crash on Friday night. Came back last night. Caution flag comes out now. Would you like to have a moment of silence, Greg? He's still moving, Adam. Here, you take him. Hang on. He's twitching. No, let's not. <laughs> Mike Farrell back on track now in the 15. Restart cone down on the front stretch. Nobody messes with my announcing partner. <laughs> this is the first time you've ever stuck up for me. This wasp is Houdini. He's going to make it out of the duct tape <laughs> and the plastic container. He's going to have a scowl on his face. <laughs> uh. We're a team here. <laughs> Although if someone had to be stung, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> Thanks. Having a look at that replay on G4 TV, just a couple of cars mixing together, and Mike Farrell actually worked out better probably that he spun to the outside because making contact in sprint cars, never a fun proposition. Dale Gosling going to lead us back to the green flag. Dylan Westbrook running second in the 47X. And when they take off out of four down this front stretch, it is exciting. You can feel the speed even from up here in the tower as they get back at it. Goslin at the halfway point, your leader with Westbrook and Brown, right? Giving chase. Brown's got some speed here tonight. Just as I say that, lost a little ground in two. It's amazing how quickly it can happen. You bobble once and you lose 10 car lengths. 
Westbrook closing in on the race leader, Goslin. He'll take a swing to the inside. Goslin keeps his foot to the floor and accelerates down the back stretch to open up that advantage once again. He'll lead them off a four another time. Two laps left to go for the driver to St. Pete, Quebec. As D Dubs takes another shot down a one, but Goslin's so good off the corner. He'll work it into three and four. See the white flag in the air. One more lap. He's got a bigger advantage over Dylan Westbrook. About eight car lengths over the 47X. Down the back stretch they go for the final time. Through three and four. Checkers out. Heat race number three. The win goes to Dale Goslin. Westbrook second. Brown third. Fourth will be Turkey. Fifth will be Martin. Sixth goes to Downey. Seventh is Jackson. And the eat spot will go to Mike Farrell. So that will conclude qualifying for the 360 sprints as Dale Goslin picks up the win in heat race number three. Rick Wilson, Chris Jones, and Dale Goslin. Who had that on their bingo cards tonight? Yeah, that's a good variety for there. Some different winners. faces. Yep. And... Did you notice a theme between those three drivers? Well, they're Easterners. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're so picked in when we're here. You live so in Brantford. <laughs> How long have you lived in Brantford? <laughs> I wasn't. Uh, anyways. You're such a homer. 20 years. 20 years. So as soon as you got married, you moved to Brantford. Yes. Yes. Wow. It's still not half my life. They would. The uh, majority has still been... I'm Eastern Ontario at heart. It is great down here. Comp four is ready to go. Two qualifying heats for them tonight. 16 cars in total on the pole. In the 37, Terry Blight to the outside. Nico Hansen in the 27. Zach Humphrey will roll off third in the 55. Tommy Bailey starts fourth in the 44. Cody Sager in the 20. We'll start in the fifth spot. Tim Moore in the 54 lines up sixth. Seventh, Jaden Miller in the 91. And eighth will be Adam Fleeler tonight is what I have on my scorecard in the 15. Two qualifiers for the comp fours. And then there and is a B main for the action sprint tour. I know that much. And then... And that's uh, then to intermission. And I'm not sure if we're doing redraws on the front stretch or not tonight. Clint will tell us that when the time comes. It's pretty good that way. Green flag flies on our first COM4 heat race of the evening. Yellow coming out. Wow. Yes, guys, redraws on the front straight away at intermission. How many times did we hear the word yellow in the tower next door? Probably because of the UTV out there. But we cannot confirm. Shame for Terry Blight. Was it Terry Blight that got off to such a good start, or was it the 55 it was Zach the 55. Humphrey? 55 Zach Humphrey jumped out. Here we go. We'll try it again. Terry Blight, Nico Hansen on the front row. Bills Johns comp fours to the green flag. Nico Hansen with a better start this time in the 27. He'll lead the way off of turn number two with Tommy Bailey in tow. Tommy Bailey always so good in that 44. Here he comes. Zach Humphrey coming up through the middle as well, trying to grab that third spot away. He'll take him from Blight. And Fleeler now in the 15, giving chase. Hansen will maintain that lead through turn two. Bailey was giving him some help off the corner, but he almost helped him a little too much. Nico Hansen with a nice save. We see Nico do that on a few times this year. Make some tremendous saves, and he made one there. Now he's got Bailey to the inside as they work down the backstretch. Look at them too wide, too deep. 
Tommy Bailey on the inside. Zach Humphrey up on the high side in the second row with Josh Bogart looking for racing room as well. Bailey down to the inside. Here comes Fleeler trying to make it. Well, he'll hit the back bumper. That he had some room there in the middle. He'll push Bailey through. And now he'll look to the bottom. Hansen closes the gap. Sager's in there as well. Looked like Hansen wanted to cross over Tommy Bailey. Couldn't quite get there. Now they're three wide off of turn number two. Humphrey with the advantage, but slower traffic is up ahead. Oh, how's this going to work out? Excuse me, pardon me. Yeah, they made it. Oh, oh. Sager did. <laughs> he squared that tire up. Good. Top three now trying to pull away from Nico Hansen. What is smoking out of the tire? Like what was coming up out of the tire? <laughs> so it's Fleeler now out in front. That's uh, Oh, that's not Josh Bogart. Well, that's the name on the roster, but I had a sub in beside it for Adam Fleeler, so we think that's who's in the 15 tonight. My apologies to Adam Fleeler, who's leading the way, and I called him Bogart. White flag is out for Fleeler, pulling away. Zach Humphrey with a good run in the second spot, but I don't think he's going to have time. Sparks and smoke out of the back end of Nico Hansen, and he'll take that to the pit area. Checkers out, and Fleeler will get the win over the 55 of Humphrey. Then it's Bailey Sager, and Moore will cross the line. I want to know what Cody Sager left in that infield tire that smoked for a whole lap. <laughs> Send Jack. One more qualifier to come for the Bills Johns Comp Fours. They're going to go have a look and see what's down in that tire. Nothing, Adam. Just want to watch us walk. We've got a fabulous message to deliver when the sprint cars come out for their feature. That's going to be good fun. Okay, Jack, don't crawl in the mud. Step out. There's nothing in the tire, Adam. Actually, Except Clint, my kid. Clint was telling me a story about getting other people's children filthy muddy at the racetrack for his own entertainment and then sending them back to their parents. Well, if you want to pay Jack 50 bucks, he'll jump in the mud like I did Bailey's kids. I could. Clint, you got 50 bucks? Right out of your pay envelope, buddy. I get paid. All right, Carter Rhodes will start on the pole in this one with Travis McLean on the outside in the 22. Evan Minnie in the 17E starts third. Scott Simpson in the 01 starts fourth. Aiden Fletcher, the 42 junior, lines up fifth. Travis Fox in the 24 sixth. Adam Davidson, the 19, rolls off seventh. And Dave Chamberlain, the 04, starts in eight. Now that 22 is normally. Tyson Gregory, but on my sheet, it, they had it scratched and said Travis McLean. So Travis McLean working over Carter Rhodes. Carter Rhodes leading the way off of turn number four. No. Oh. Mosquitoes are gone. <laughs> and we got the 0-4 of Chamberlain broken down here in corner four. Right back they go to corner four. I, I can't see. <laughs> the zero four has the uh, axle tore on the left side. They're going to need a tow truck here. We'll have a look at the replay from our speed shot. It'll be over to the right side of the screen. And yeah, that car just broke. And then as if something out of James Bond... The smoke screen was deployed on the front straightaway. <laughs> oh, yeah, heavy damage there. Well, down inside, we can see the axle and everything has been tore apart. And you can see how far back the left front is tore over. And they got a whole bunch of parts here on the track, too. They're going to need to clean up underneath the car. And you can see it's part of the drive shaft or the drive axle there underneath the car. We'll pick it up, and we are ready to go. 
wisely taps it first. Is it hot? Okay, no, I can, I can pick it up. Just tap it in. So we'll stack him back up with one on the board, seven to go. And the double zero's back. Just throw on another quart. We're ready. What on earth could that have been? And more so, what could a pit crew have done <laughs> to make in the 45 <laughs> seconds that that car was in the pit? Burgers are done. I don't think you add oil. I think oh, you take oil. No. There it goes again. They added more bug repellent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wow. It's a little thicker that time. It's almost got the perfect formula. Keep working on it. Carter Rhodes leading the way off of turn number four in that white number 18 Dybbuk. Sponsored entry. Smell it up here now, whatever it is. Rhodes, winner last night in the mini stocks out in front. Leading the way over the 22 of Travis McLean. Here comes Aiden Fletcher to the inside now. Fletcher down low, a little bit of contact there with McLean. Fletcher will take that second spot down the back stretch into turn number three. Still pretty tight confines for that second position. And the 19 of Adam Davidson right now in the thick of it. Filling in tonight. Little bump draft into turn three by Adam Davidson. Carter Rhodes on cruise control out in front. This time by only two laps left to go in the final qualifying heat of the night. With a B main still to come for the action sprint tour and then features. Curious sound from Scott Simpson zero one. I was one. gonna say that. It's like a sewing machine on the inside. <laughs> like it's just got a different <laughs> white flag out. Carter Rhodes leading the way. More than half a straightaway. Carter Rhodes will bring it off a corner for Whoa, Davidson into the 22. Carter Rhodes gets the win. Fletcher holds on for second over McLean and Davidson. And Davidson politely backed out of things. You know, after he had drove in so deep into turn number three, backed off to give the opportunity for the car in front of him to gather things together. So that wraps up heat race action. Action sprint tour with their B main coming out onto the racetrack. That's all you, Adam. You've got this. I can do it. You can do it. You can do it. On the pole out of Brockville, the double zero is Ryan Poole starting second from St. Catharines. The two S is Al Slate. Third from Rosslyn, the 4K is Jamie K. Fourth from Brantford, the 88 is Lance Erskine. Fifth from Listowel, the 97 is Sheldon Bender. Sixth from Caster Center, the 11W is Josh Robertson. Seventh from London, the 19M is Will March. Eighth from Ottawa, the M52 is Mark Supernit. And rounding out the field from Port Perry in the 4B, it's Four Barrel Daryl, Daryl Peltier. That's everyone scheduled to roll. Peltier did pull off early from his qualifying heat, so we'll see if he's able to make the call. 27 cars in attendance. We're going to start 24 of them. So six of these nine cars will transfer straight into, well, not straight into, will transfer to tonight's A main. Looks like Peltier is getting the push out here, so I believe we will have all nine cars. Start this B feature. Beautiful looking car there for Lance Erskine in that 88. Got that 
New wrap partway through the season. Connell Construction. Well, I think Corey Turner's going to win the speed main. I got my money on the 17X. <laughs> Saw him pull out. Not sure if they might have had a problem on that 17X and they just want to fire it up and run a lap. Yeah. News from the 360 sprints. I just got a message from Kevin Lovey. He said they are done for the night in the Tyler Palace pit. They've got a broken rocker arm in the engine, and they're going to load up and go home, guys. So engine trouble wow. for the Palace 77. What a bomber. Yeah, big time. Great second-place run there in that qualifying heat. It's a cruel sport, it's car racing. They didn't bring the 77K as a backup car, Clint? Uh, no, they did not. The field starting to get pushed off here. Ryan Poole from Brockville. Going to start on the pole. Al Slate from St. Catharines going to start on the outside of the front row. It's been a great season of racing for these great sprint cars. Lots of race cars. As Greg mentioned yesterday, more than 60 drivers have attempted to qualify at Oshwigan Speedway alone. And this is exactly what the National Tour was designed to do. To come to a place like Brighton Speedway, instead of bringing 12 to 14 cars down from our end of Ontario, you bring a dozen cars from our end, a dozen cars from the other end, and you have a great full field of competition for the fans here at Brighton Speedway. And not just that, just the level of parity in this division is incredible. And we see that week in and week out. There's been some dominant stretches here and there by drivers, but for the most part, th this division just so uh, up in the air. When you arrive at the track, you never really truly know who's going to win the race. You know, we have a lot of drivers that are in this division that don't travel outside of Oshweekin or Brockville or KM, their home tracks. But we have had 62 different drivers take points on the Action Sprint Tour so far this year. And that's very impressive when you think it was only nine years ago we started with 14 at Oshweekin. Impressive indeed. So impressive you could say it twice, Clint. You don't need to, but you could. So nice I said it. Never. That rhymes. Again, if it rhymes, it's worth repeating. Nine cars going to take the green flag next time at a turn four. Six cars going to run in tonight's A main. Who's it going to be? Ryan Poole in the double zero. Al Slate in the 2S on the high side. Slowly turn, through turns three and four. Twelve laps going to be the distance. And off they go. Starting positions on the line for the rest of the drivers. Oh, problems there for Mark Supernant. He is going down into the pit area now. He'll safely get there. He tagged the wall on a turn four coming to the start. And his night will end prematurely. Josh Robertson in the 11 gets up off the racetrack. He was up there in a transfer spot. Now he'll have to fight his way back out at the front. It's Ryan Poole leading the way. Erskine and Slate, second and third. Sheldon Bender holding down the fourth spot and thought it. Yeah, he's, he's got a problem. Power, yeah. He came off that second corner, lost power in the 97. Oh, that's disappointing for Sheldon Bender, the young man from Listowel, Ontario. So now. There's seven cars still running on the racetrack. One of them will not be running the feature event. Can Josh Robertson close it? Oh, baby. That was an interesting hit there. Will March catching the bales off of turn number two after touching tires. Exactly what we talked about with Mike Farrell in the 360 heats. You know, you want to avoid contact at all costs, even if it means spinning out. 
Will March made some contact there in turn number two, and he's hustling to climb out of this 19 machine. Well, we thought we were having a replay of Rick Wilson. He nearly caught the bridge here, but he's out of the car already. And not sure who he's unhappy with. Will, are you okay? Yes, sir. Uh, I just tried going around him on the corner, and I don't know. My front left got into his right rear, I guess. Went for a wild ride, but I don't know. It is what it is. Who got you? I honestly can't remember his number. I just try and get around him, and here we are. Honestly, I don't even know. I'm, I'm kind of in shock right now. I'm a little over. Oh, just Settle down. Grab your stuff together. We'll get him out. Get his safety gear ready. Let's take a look at the car. The rear end is all skewed. Come around this side, Jack. Oh. You can see all the broken parts here as it slammed the tire wall pretty big. You got your torsion arms all tore off, broken shock, and the axle pushed right up into the frame, guys. And the challenge being there for Will Marsh. So when you make contact with the right rear tire of the car that you're battling with, one of two things have happened. Either they've just passed you in sort of a slide job situation, or you're coming and trying to position yourself to their outside where they're not, they have no way of knowing if you're there sometimes. I believe it was the 4K. The uh, Jamie K machine. We'll have a look on the replay. It's going to come from the right side of the screen. And yeah, Will March just trying to swing to the outside there. And a little bit of contact is all it takes to send a car sailing. And that's exactly what it did. Well, now these six drivers can breathe a sigh of relief if they know that there's only six cars left. If the race directors let them know. Well, Josh Robertson knows because he's right. Well, he wouldn't know that there's nobody behind him, I suppose. But everybody on the racetrack will qualify for tonight's A main. They just got to keep it clean and finish this eight lap B main. Well, 12 lap B main, but there's only eight laps remaining. Is Ryan Poole going to bring them out of turn number four, headed for the green? Look at Lance Erskine. He is right there chomping at the bit to get by Ryan Poole. So he sent it down into corner number three. Erskine tries to work the outside line off of corner number four. He's got a good run. Ryan Poole leaves that outside open. I don't know if he heard the 88 coming or just knew the nature of this track. You want to leave a little bit of room there, but he left that room for Lance Erskine. Erskine wasn't able to seal the deal. He'll try again this time. Six laps left to go halfway home in this B main. Whoa, Erskine skates it oh. off, and now Pelche gets into the implement tire, and K goes around. What a turn of events there for Dale Peltier and Jamie Kay. Josh Robertson does a nice job to thread his way through that situation. It'd be a great time to throw the checkered flag. <laughs> we want to take six cars. Not less. There's the Jamie K machine. They're going to back of the truck up to the front end of that. No, that was Daryl Pelche. Pelche. I'm sorry. K is right there on the hook down in the weeds. Okay, that's kind of trippy. Didn't we just see a camera of a tow truck backing up to the Pelche 4? But the Pelche 4 is right there. It'll be okay, Adam. It's the final race night of the weekend. I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> So Kay is pulled out of the drink. Pelche is going again. Kay comes off the hook, so you have to wonder if maybe they think either there's front end damage and needs to be hooked to the pits from that front end, or he just needs a push to keep going. Now, the way Brett Meineker is there looking at things, and... Cowboy Woody, who's that there? <laughs> Sorry. 
Then ask him if there's a snake in his boot. He's the creek sheriff, making sure <laughs> nobody gets creek over sheriff. there. <laughs> yeah, Jamie Kay's got problems on the front end of this car. You can see, what you can see, guys, is the frame rail is laid right down on the ground here, so the suspension is let go, and it's rubbing right on the ground there. And also the wheel tucked in here into the wing. And if you look over here, Jack, we've also got the torsion arm bent right under itself. That should be straight back there over the axle, but it's bent under the car. That'll be a tough one to get repaired in time to get out for the feature event because he is a qualified driver. And that will do it for qualifying action here tonight, folks. So we'll take a quick break, and I believe we'll be back with redraws on the front stretch when we come back on GeForce TV. Grab up your engines and get ready for some high-octane action. GeForce TV is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across Ontario. With free live coverage of the ABC Series, Bushwick and Speedway, Southern Ontario Sprints, and much more, you won't miss a single moment of the excitement. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, GeForce TV has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events. Head to our website at GeForceTV.net and start watching today. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. It all started for us at the racetrack. From dirt to water. We have continued to keep the adrenaline and drive to make sure that we are always in the forefront. We are driven to give our customers the absolute best in service, products, and memories with your family. No matter what your passion is, whether it's on the water, in the dirt, on the snow, or on the road, we will always be here welcoming you over and over again through the doors here at Lockhart. You're not just a customer here, you are part of our team. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Back live at Brighton Speedway, we see over in the pit area, that is where the driver redraws are taking place. Want to keep this show moving as there is a talk of some potential weather somewhere in the area. So just in uh, being very precautious, we want to keep things moving along. So drivers are over there in the pit area and are uh, picking for position for the sprint car features here tonight. 
Doug Oblenis on track there with his Canadian modified. Mitch Brown there picking. And then Clint, if you get an opportunity, we need you to make a stop in the tower over here on the front stretch, please. The farthest point from where he is right now. <laughs> it's for a fan. Not needed immediately, but when he has the time. Some hot laps here for the Canadian Modifies. Leslie Mowat and Doug Blemis. Mowat's trying to make up the lap she lost last night when she was pinned into the pits by a hauler trying to exit. Feature action still to come here on G-Force TV. Stingers will be up first with their feature event, followed by the action sprint tour, Thunderstocks, 360 sprints, and we'll conclude tonight with the Comp 4s. That's a sharp looking car that Doug Oblenis has. Always uh, well prepared, nice looking cars for the Oblenis family. Got to see him in action last night. Caitlin's in action tonight in the Thunderstocks. Racing is very much a family affair. So the Quinnyseptic Stingers look like they're ready to pull onto the racetrack for their feature event here tonight. And it will be 12 laps the distance for their main event. And this is how they will line up from the pole. Sam Whaley in the 88 to the outside will be the 93 of Jordan Pickle. Starting third in car number nine tonight, Zach McDonald. And rolling off fourth in the seven, Josh Toon. Alex Woods in the 99 will start fifth. Cody Easton in the 29 starts sixth. Starting seventh in the 03, Dylan Barker. And Josh Sparks in the 47 starts eighth. Kevin Much in the 14 starts in ninth. Kendall Hayes in the 27 will start tenth. Billy O'Hara, the 31, lines up 11th. 12th will be the 66 of Ray Davies. Lightning Tom Cole in the 6th starts 13th. Christine Thompson in the 71 lines up 14th. Chris Johnson in the 68 will start in 15th. And Nicole DeVoe in the 95 starts 16th. That's your starting lineup for the Quinny Septic Stingers. All 16 cars making the call for the grid over here on turn number three. Believe the redraws are completed. Back over in the pits, we see Jack and Clint making their way across the infield. And it's go time here at Brighton Speedway. Abby is up in the air. We, uh, we had a drone today for the coverage at CTMP. What a huge difference to be able to call the races. Oh, they, yeah. they incorporated that into the shots we had. We were able to use. Yeah, that would help things immensely at CTMP for sure. And what a place. What a place. If you've never been, I highly suggest that even if you're not a road racing fan, the experience is it's hard to describe. How about this, Brighton fans? The 42W, Rick Wilson pulled number one. He will start in the pole on the 360 race tonight. 
Don't have the action sprint tour lineup yet, but we do know that. So, do you happen to know officially what the claim rule is for this class? It used to be, I believe, it was $500, wasn't it? With I, inflation, I wonder if that number has changed, but originally I believe it was $500, and uh, anyone could claim your car for that amount. And the reason they have claim rules is to prevent people from spending a lot of right. money on a car they don't want you spending a lot of money on. I believe that number is still under $1,000. Uh, Ryan Hunsinger actually, Hunsinger actually messaged me to talk about it. He says, we should both buy cars here tonight. Come and play. It's a good division. Lots of good action. Some of these drivers have been in it. Since day one, I believe, uh, you think about a name like Jordan Pickle, for as long as I can remember calling Stinger races, Jordan Pickle's been a part of this division. The idea is to come out and have a good time. And that's, can we start this race with a quick, quick fire it up? Enjoy the sights and sounds of the Stinger division once we get started. Lights. Clinton Jeffries doing something nice in the tower, and I actually think it's going to break. It's going to break him. Quick, quick, fire it up. front leading the way in this one over Zach McDonald Bickle was good in the qualifying heat and good again in the feature event as we've got one slow down the front straight away yeah lightning Tom Cole is uh, out of lightning here tonight that car slows and creeps now into the pit area So right now, it's Pickle, McDonald, and Sam Whaley in the 88. Then you've got the 99 machine of Alex Woods running in fourth. And the 14 of Kevin Mutch, who won his qualifying heat earlier tonight. driving away from this one and this is the kind of night that'll get aimed on a driver Zach McDonald, slow in the corner number three. 
sell the victory to Jordan and the quintessential stingers. He'll go down to APC Victory Lane in just a moment. Talk with our Clinton Jeffrey. And a note from Mark Rinaldi about the class. The claim rule is 950 bucks for the car. The driver gets to keep the seat, the safety equipment, and the battery, the window net, fire extinguisher, things like that. So all the safety gear stays with the driver, but the car itself can be purchased for less than $1,000. APC Victory Lane rolling in, and Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene. Jordan Pilka here in the 93 into APC Brighton Speedway Victory Lane. He'll work his way out here, and we'll get a word with him. And we'll bring him around to this side for a quick chat with Jordan Pickle, ladies and gentlemen. Jordan, solid drive tonight in what seems like quite a fun class out there. We were talking about the claim rule keeps things fair. How about from the driver's seat? You having a good time? I'm having a blast tonight. It seems like it's fast track. They did a good prep work tonight. I did get my claim, my car claimed there one time, but I ended up getting it back, so everybody kind of wants a fast car out here. You put your time and effort into it, and you can get a fast car. Right on. Jordan Pickle grabs the stinger. Division feature event here tonight for the Quinty Septic Stingers. We'll be right back live here on G-Force TV from Brighton Speedway Action Sprint Tour National Event coming up next. Gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. I think it just races like a big, big fast track. If you're not aggressive and you're not willing to make it dicey, you're not passing nobody and you're not going to be fast. Victor Bomberry found his limits. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Back at Brighton Speedway on G-Force TV as our second feature of the night getting pushed out onto the racetrack. It's the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's. Here on the final night of the Labor Day Classic weekend, Greg Kellen, Adam Ross up in the booth, Clinton Jeffrey down track side, and uh, we're ready to go 24 strong here for this national tour event for the Action Sprint Tour, Adam. 24 cars for 25 laps. If you experienced any sound difficulties in the last five or 10 minutes, we hope everything's back up to full song. Here's the starting lineup. For the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's Feature Event. 
On the pole from Oshwegan, the 77E is Ashton Van Every alongside, also from Oshwegan, the 28T is Cameron Thompson. Starting third from Six Nations in the 20, it's the Iceman, Johnny Miller. On the outside of row two from Picton, the 87 is Andrew Hennessy. Fifth from Wayne Fleet, the 85C is Cam McKinnon. Sixth from Mosley, the 3S is Austin Rose. Seventh from Richmond, Quebec, the 55 is Jeffrey Weir. Eighth from Brockville, the 52 is Matt Billings. Ninth from Alexandria, the 51L, it's the General Lee, Lee Latasseur. Starting 10th from Mallorytown, the 17 is Chris Herbison. 11th from Pierreville, Quebec, the 19 is Matthew Bardier. And 12th from Kitchener, the 50 LS is Adrian Staley. 13th from Cherry Valley, the 9 is Adam Turner. 14th from St. Catharines, the 71 is Mike Bowman. 15th from Brockville, the 13 is Evan Reynolds. 16th from Joyceville, the 15 is April Wilson. 17th from Bowmanville, the 31C is Dale Curran. 18th from Oshwegan, the 9C is Brian Nanakoke. 19th from Brockville, the double zero is Ryan Poole. And 20th from Brantford, the 88 is Lance Erskine. 21st from St. Catharines, the 2S is Al Slate. 22nd from Keister Center, the 11W is Josh Robertson. 23rd from Port Perry in the 4B, it's 4-barrel Daryl, Daryl Peltier. And rounding out the field from Roslyn, the 4K, is Jamie K. So I doubt Jamie K would be able to make the call. Clinton Jeffrey, do we go to a bubble car in the Action Sprint Tour? We do not. Okay. We do not. We ask, he answers. Fantastic. So cars just about ready to get pushed off and rolling here for our second feature of the night. Still to come Thunderstocks up next. 360s will follow that and will conclude tonight with the Com 4 division. For Barrel Darrell, the first one to get pushed off and ready to go for this action sprint tour. National event presented by Pinties. Matt Billings, the winner one night ago. Over Adam Turner and Matthew Bardier. We look at the front of the field for this one, and this to me is fascinating. Ashton Van Every drives very well here at Brighton Speedway. Cameron Thompson has shown some moments of brilliance. Johnny Miller, the ice man, we talked him up earlier on. Things are improving for Miller behind the wheel of the number 20. And, of course, Andrew Hennessy with more experience here at Brighton Speedway than almost anybody. He'll start fourth. As we look down the top six cars, I mean, there would nobody would surprise me in here if they were able to sneak out of Brighton Speedway with the victory tonight. No, it's wide open here tonight. And Brighton Speedway is always the great equalizer. With limited events throughout the year for these action sprinter drivers at some of the different tracks that they go to. Obviously, Brockville and uh, Oshuiken, the two home tracks where these cars run on a regular basis. But uh, everything else, a bit of an equalizer, and Brighton is definitely that. And we've seen that already here after one night of racing. We'll see what we end up with at the end of this 25-lap main event. Brian Nanakoke just buzzing up the tires in turn four, just about spun out into Matt Billings in that 52. That would have been awkward. Looks like all the cars have taken fire, with the exception of Lee Latasseur down in the middle of one and two. That should be the last car to get fired up here. And they'll be... Be ready to get these cars into formation, two by two by two. We expect 23 cars to take the green flag. Jeffrey, who do you have in this one? Although I suppose for your sake we should wait till they're in the right order so you know who's starting where. 
But it's been a great weekend of racing. They had a heck of a show last night. No reason to believe tonight would be any different. They've got it in them, that's for sure. Well, you got Ashton Van Every and Cam Thompson on the front row, which is going to be a pretty wild show. Johnny Miller lines up position number three, but I think maybe Andrew Hennessy in position number four. I'd love to see Cam Thompson have a great run, but Andrew Hennessy, the hometown guy, just might have something here at the home field advantage, guys. No, I don't think you can argue with your logic there. I think Ashton Van Every's got a good shot at getting out front and leading some laps here. But... You and I can talk about things all we want. Greg can throw in his opinion. Ultimately, none of it matters because when the green flag drops, the nonsense stops. April Wilson, a little bit late getting to the party. She comes out in that number 15 machine from Joyceville. Did we have a caution last night, Greg, in the action feature? One of them went caution-free. That's a good question. It was so long ago. Yes, I believe there was. Yes. Just past the halfway point, there was. Race fans, pull out your cell phones. Fire up those flashlights on them. The field going to get into four wide formation. I believe they will hold it for a full lap. So keep those phones lit up. Salute these drivers as they're going to salute you with the most impressive sight in dirt racing. That's more like it. Down the back straight away. Five rows of four, one row of three. Sort the field out, clear out those engines, and we should be ready to see the white flag this time out of turn number four. Maybe next time. That's being displayed right now, so we're ready to go racing next time around for the action sprint tour presented by Pinty's. Austin Rose, third row on the outside, is the first car in this field with a feature win. Nobody in the top five has collected victory yet in this class, so this will make for an exciting feature event. Green flag is out. Little bobbing and weaving down there, one and two. Everyone clean and green as they come out of three and four the first time. It's going to be Ashton Van Every, the leader at the line over Cam Thompson. Andrew Hennessy in a three car fight right now for fourth. The middle of this field going crazy. Two wide, three wide through the turns out in front. Ashton Van Every trying to find a groove, get comfortable out there as Andrew Hennessy battling with Cam Thompson for second. Thompson around the outside of Hennessy. Hennessy gets a good drive off the bottom of the corner. They're both racing in behind. Ashton Van Every out in front in that Nitro 54 variety. 70-70. E. Here comes Hennessy. He'll throw it in deep down to one. He had a shot there at Van Every. He'll rip it around the top and pull away. Last night's winner, Matt Billings, into the top five there, running in the fifth spot. He loves the bottom of the racetrack. He's able to creep that inside groove and make a lot of speed where there's still a little bit of bite in the track. Austin Rose, Cam Thompson side by side right now for that third spot as they roll it off of corner number four. Here comes Billings now to the inside of Thompson, and he will try and cut in front of him there and off of corner number two. He'll get the spot away and now head towards Austin Rose as the battle at the front gets a little bit tighter. 
Richard Van Avery running a nice steady line about three quarters of the way up the racetrack, a little bit lower there in one and two. But he's held a pretty wheel so far. Andrew Hennessy putting on the pressure, but right now, Ashton Van Avery doing a nice job with what he has to do out there in the front. Hennessy is sticking with him. Down and one and up, number two, Matt Billings. Meanwhile, will dispose of Austin Rose and put himself into the third position. Impressive to watch Ashton Van Every doing battle with a driver with so many wins here at Brighton Speedway. And even as Hennessy gets around on the inside, Van Every still keeping that momentum on the high side and able to roll around the top. Hennessy, your leader in the back part of the field, already in sight of the leaders as here comes Van Every back to the outside of the 87. Hennessy continues to lead, going into number three, and Matt Billings has reeled in the top two. Well, they've been duking it out. Austin Rowe is up for the fourth spot. Lee Lattisor just outside of the top five in that 51 machine, but out front. Andrew Hennessy leading the way. He's built up a few car lengths over Ashton Van Every. Here comes Matt Billings working on that 70-70 of Ashton Van Every. Hennessy into the inside of Robertson, the slower car. He'll put him a lap down off the fourth corner. Van Every still in second. Billings following him closely. Rose and then Lattisur now trying to work his way into the top five. Van Every working on the slower car of Josh Robertson. He'll dispense of him down into turn three. We're halfway through this 25 lap feature event. All this racing with Van Every and Billings is a good thing for Andrew Hennessy. As to pull a little bit away from Van Every. As we got Rose, Latticer, and Thompson behind that battle between the top three. It's gotten by Thompson now. Yeah, Lee Latticer is on the march towards the front, slow and steady. A yellow flag would be a big benefit for the driver of the 51, but so far we stay clean and green. Johnny Miller also trying to find his way towards the top five as he works on sixth place, the 28 of Cam Thompson. He's got Barge right behind him as well. Johnny Miller, the brake rotor glowing orange in the back of that 20 machine as he works down into the corner, trying to get under Cam Thompson. Hennessy had pulled away a little bit, but I think Ashton Van Every's reeled him in. He's within striking distance. Billings right on his tail tank. Austin Rose and Lee Latticer aren't far off. The top five right now are the ones in it for the win. Ashton Van Every just so impressed with this young driver. The poise that he's showing out here tonight as he'll work to the outside of April Wilson through three and four. Get by Wilson, he'll have clear shot at the leader. No traffic between he and Andrew Hennessy. Hennessy's got a little bit of a ways to go to get into four barrel Darrell before he'll encounter a lot thicker traffic as Hennessy clicks off another one, six to go. Ashton Van Every a couple of tenths of a second. We're under yellow. One around up in turn number two. It's Ryan Poole, Ashton Van Every but a quarter of a second faster than Andrew Hennessy. Can the youngster muster up the racecraft to mount a challenge on the leader? Will he be more focused on the 52 that he can see on the scoreboard that's behind him? And I think this played into the favor of Lee Latticer as well. He'd been marching towards the front, got into the top five, and. The top five had kind of bunched up and pulled away from the rest of the packs. So we're really going to see amongst those five who are the quickest. And I'm not about to give uh, put Johnny Miller out of this yet either because he was up there moving through the field as well and got himself into the sixth spot. Anything's possible. Adam Turner creeping his way into the top ten. Mike Bowman in the 71. This field is so deep with skill. And then you've got youthful enthusiasm at the front. Two drivers at the front of the field looking for their first win. Matt Billings looking for another win. Same with Austin Rose.
So Poole pointed in the right direction. They'll give that double zero a push down in turn number two. The car takes fire. And he'll be able to rejoin the field at the field at the tail end. Just six laps to go. Things sure do happen in a hurry, right? That they do. It's going to be a quick six laps and how big would a hometown win be for Andrew Hennessy in that 87? It's pretty hard to get Andrew Hennessy like really excited, but I think this would be a pretty big win for him. Well, we may just find out you're right, a very even keeled individual. And I think it'd be equally interesting to see Ashton Van Every and his reaction to a win. I think the uh, reality show Friday Night Thunder is really bringing a lot of good things out of Ashton Van Every. He's got a fantastic personality, just a friendly young man, so much positivity. He is a big kid. I hope he gets into the top three here so people can see him climb out of that car. Not your typical sprint car driver looking kid. Green flag is out, six laps to settle. A great restart for Andrew Hennessy. Not as good for Ashton Van Every, but he'll power off at turn number two with the advantage. Matt Billings staying close to the tire tracks of that 77E. Boy, Matthew Bardier had a great restart on the outside. He got himself into the top five by Lee Lattiser. He's going to try to do the same thing by Austin Rose. Can't get the same run on him, but he's working on that 3S for the fourth spot. Adam Turner to the inside of Johnny Miller, a little deeper in the top ten, but at the front, it's all Andrew Hennessy with Ashton Van Every continuing to hang on to that second spot. Three laps left to go. For Andrew Hennessy over Ashton Van Every, Matt Billings, Austin Rose, Lee Lattiser got back by Barjay. Barjay, though, not going to let that one go he's hanging on the outside close call on the front stretch between Chris Herbis and Adrian Staley they survive that one and keep on battling that's outside of the top 10 but at the front Andrew Hennessy has just been given the two laps to go white flag off a corner for Andrew Hennessy one lap away from his first win here at Brighton Speedway action sprint tour style into turn number three for the final time. Andrew Hennessy sets the car on the bottom. He'll come off at turn number four. Checkered flag for Hennessy. Van Every with a career best second place finish. Matt Billings going to round out the podium. Austin Rose Lee Lattiser rounding out the top five. Turner 6th, Bargey 7th, Miller 8th, Bowman ninth, and Thompson 10th. They have to clear the scales. And then they can celebrate in victory lane, Clinton Jeffrey. Looks like he's going to head straight down to victory lane, but he is in a hustle wherever he's going. Very popular win here for Andrew Hennessy. He'll head down to APC Victory Lane. And Greg, these races are not easy to win. No. The Action Sprint Tour has a lot of skilled drivers with varied backgrounds. Andrew Hennessy as skilled as anybody, but Wins don't come easy, that's for sure. And he is making his way down to victory lane where he'll be greeted by Clinton Jeffrey. And we'll see just how excited Andrew Hennessy is. I think Ashton Van Every on his second place run is going to be pretty darn excited as well. I have to think so as well. And uh, what a great run for him. So close to that first win for Ashton Van Every. And Andrew Hennessy, we see the helmet coming off. Let's send it down to Clinton Jeffrey. I just joked. I said, Andrew, how about some emojis? I'm going to try not to cry. So we'll get him out here. How 
How about it, Brighton? One of your own wins the Action Sprint Tour national event round number six in his rookie season here with the three, uh, Crate Sprint Cars. And it has been quite a run here for Andrew Hennessy. He gets the belts off and works his way out. And when he comes out here, we need a big Brighton Speedway APC Victory Lane welcome for your winner tonight, Action Sprint Tour. Feature winner, Andrew Hennessy. Andrew, what a drive here. You know you made the swap out of the late models into the crate sprints here, and it has been cool. How cool is this to win at Brighton? Man, I, I worked my ass off all year, <laughs> and I was uh, no confidence at all, just week to week. You run good, don't run good. Um, I don't care right now. All, all I care about is that he's here, and I'm uh, glad they let him out here. Uh, I didn't think it would happen. <laughs> I, I've tried really hard. I've spent a lot of hours in the shop like you wouldn't believe. And I get my butt kicked by these guys. So, you know, you go to Osh Weekend, didn't even qualify. First time in my life that's ever happened. But, you know, I don't run against that many cars. You know, 40 cars show up at your, your racetrack. But uh, anyways, we did a pile of work last week. And uh, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say Ryan Hunsinger, you know, and Ryan Turner. Um, and I think there's Jamie Turner. There's a whole bunch of them. I, I, I talk to them all the time. Even Dale at DSE. Um, the list goes on and on and on. It really does. I never, uh, I never quit asking questions and trying to figure these things out because it seemed like it was going to be a long time before I did. But It paid off, Andrew. He got it done. How about it for Andrew Hennessy, ladies and gentlemen? Man, oh, man, how happy can we be for Andrew Hennessy? A well-deserved victory as he's just pulled the 50-50 number. So if you got 50, 50 tickets. I'll get that number out in just one second. Come on down here. I'll get that out for you. Ashton, what a drive for you. Adam said we'd see a good smile out of your face today. Pretty cool, man. You almost had him. You got to be real pleased with the runner-up spot here tonight. Uh, yeah, man. We, uh, we had really good luck here uh, last year and just couldn't get the job done. But uh, we had unfinished business here. And... Uh, yeah, we uh, finally landed on a podium. This is a big confidence booster, and I, I just can't believe it, man. I, I, <laughs> I got on a podium with a sprint car. This is awesome. And, uh, you know, I just can't uh, th thank the people enough for that makes this happen. Uh, Nitro 54, uh, Trish and Dan, uh, UCA, uh, everybody that helps out in this car, uh, Ryan Turner. You know, these two guys over here, my dad and Bear, uh, they work their tail off every, every week to get us here. And, uh you know, there's no quit in this team, but uh, yeah, I couldn't do it without the people in front of me. Great job. Ashton Van Every. if you want to see more of this youngster, they have him featured on the APTN channel. Their season three premiere comes out next Friday on APTN, and he's one of the featured drivers there. We'll jump in here with third place now. Matt, you know, a first and a third is pretty good in two national events back to back. Yeah, I mean, Car was, uh, was working pretty good, pretty happy with it. We, uh, you know, we've been tweaking on it all year, but uh, I mean, hats off to Andrew. I know he's been working really hard and uh, to get, get his first win in uh, front of his hometown. I mean, hats off to him, but I can't thank Ryan and Jeff and uh, Tim Koval, Snap-on, and uh, Slate's uh, Marine Construction. I mean, they're, we're working hard and I mean, we keep putting up, uh, putting up really good results. Just uh, track position was, uh, was, I think, key tonight, but uh, hey man, we're still, we're still here. Matt Billings will finish third. Second will be Ashton Van Every. And your winner here at the national event, Andrew Hennessy, will be back live here on GeForce TV. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee. 
TKC. Let's take this piece of to TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. TKC will recycle your piece of car. Got a piece of car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling, 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Early man discovered Whoa. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Grab up your engines and get ready for some high-octane action. GeForce TV is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across Ontario. With free live coverage of the ABC Series, Bushwick and Speedway, Southern Ontario Sprints, and much more, you won't miss a single moment of the excitement. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, GeForce TV has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events. Head to our website at GeForceTV.net and start watching today. Back live at Brighton Speedway. Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks ready to go with their feature events starting on the pole. Be the 45 of Dylan Riley to the outside, the one of Brandon Gregory. Rolling off third in the 11, Cole McEwen. And starting in fourth, the 19 of Corey White. Fifth stop, uh, spot will be the 72 of Doug Anderson. Brock Gregory in the 86 lines up in sixth. Seventh will be the 03 of Justin Ramsey. And eighth, the 9 of Josh Black. Starting in the ninth position, Tyler French in the zero. Mike Lucas in the 74 starts in 10th. Dave Barrett in the 97 rolls off 11th to his outside. Kyle Anderson in the 18 starts 12th. Bill O'Hara in the six lines up 13th. 14th will be Austin Reed tonight in the 17. Ricky Phillips in the seven starts 15th. The 76 of Cody Driscoll will line up in the 16th spot. Caitlin O'Blenis will start in 17th in car 16. 18th starting position, the 46 X of Adam Switzer. 19th position belongs to Tory Pope in the 27, and Angie Kirby in the 08 starts 20th. 21st, Doug May in the 23. 22nd will be Patrick Easton in the 88. 23rd, the 46 of Dion Riley and Chris Hackett in the 06 starts in the 24th position. White flag being displayed as we're ready to go with the Brighton Automotive Thunderstock feature 20 laps will be the distance. 12 rows of two cars, that's a full field. Even fuller here at Brighton Speedway. They take up the full length of the front straightaway plus a little bit of turn number one. This should be a good one, Greg. Thunderstocks anywhere in the province put on a great show and I don't uh, doubt this will be another good one here. Some work to do for drivers like Doug Anderson. And Justin Ramsey back there in fifth and seventh. Tyler French right behind that as well as the green flag is out. We're underway. The Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. Down the back straightaway for the first time. It's Dylan Riley in the 45 leading the way through three and four. One lap on the scoreboard. As they work by the start-finish line the first time, Riley holding on, but he's feeling some pressure already. And Riley going to cough up that lead, drop back to the third position. And White will go to the top of the board. In the 19 machine, Brock Gregory in the one up to the second spot. Riley back to third. Then you've got the 86. Brandon Gregory in the one. The, the, the scoring monitor here is showing Brock, but it's Brandon Gregory in the one. That's why I had the Excel file up. Okay, that's my bad. Brandon Gregory looks so good in his qualifying heat earlier on, putting the pressure on White for the lead. Another great battle for the third spot. Look at that. One, two, three, five rows of two battling for third. Great fight back there. As the battle for the top spot now is getting tight, Brandon Gregory is right there on the back bumper of Corey Oh, White. trouble! Big pile up in four. Doug Anderson was kind of involved. Our early race leader in five, Dylan Riley, got turned around. 
sideways across the track in turn four. These drivers did a heck of a job to not make it a bigger pileup than it was. Josh Black there in the infield trying to get some power there to the and some traction there in the mud and he'll pull away with some right front damage on the number nine. And now he'll head to the pit area with White and Brandon Gregory one and two. Then you've got Brock Gregory in the 86. Tyler French lines up fourth and Justin Ramsey in fifth. Well, a lot of skilled drivers starting a little bit further back in the field, trying to work their way towards the front. As we mentioned, Thunderstock racing on the dirt in Ontario, always entertaining. I screwed Greg up. I, I made him mess up names, so I'm getting my scoring up and running. We saw Riley just lost it by the looks of it. Things got pretty crowded down there for a short time as we've got 15 laps remaining in this one. Still to come, 360 sprints and the comp fours to conclude night number two of the Labor Day Classic brought to you by Rock 107 Mystical Distributing and Rapid Rad. Coming up at Brighton Speedway next Saturday night, QBT presents final points night for the late models. The John's Equipment Danny Reed 50 lap memorial for the Canadian Modifieds, Comp Fours, Mini Stocks, and Stingers. And then a week off before Friday, September 22nd, Saturday, September 23rd for Apple Fest weekend on the Friday nights, the Dirt Car Sportsman Series race. Canadian modified UMP modified heats. Heats for the late models in a dash heat. Thunder stocks, mini stocks duel in the dirt combined race. 358 hot laps in a dash for cash. And then on Saturday night, September 23rd, Brian's auction, Coca Cola and Cool 100 present the Apple Fest shootout for the Dirt Car 358 modified. 75 laps in the Apple Fest shootout. Dirt Car Sportsman Series plus a great crate race for the late models. Thunder stocks duel on the dirt. UMP Canadian Modified Feature and Comp 4 Open. So that's the big final nights of racing before the eve of destruction. And if you haven't seen that, boy, oh, boy. I, th I thought I read maybe it was sold out. Maybe not. Angie can correct me on that. But uh, nonetheless, eve of destruction. Doug Anderson making it back out onto the racetrack in that number 72. He'll put on a show coming from the back of the field. We're about to go green. Corey White leading the way alongside Brandon Gregory. 15 laps to go in this 20-lap feature event. Black and Anderson from the back. They're trumped on it. They're the drop of the green. We'll see what they can do. As it's three wide behind the leader, White. Justin Ramsey down on the inside. Who was that wedged in the middle? Was that Tyler French? Yeah, Tyler French got the worst of that. Oh, he Barrett. gets into Barrett. There goes Brandon Gregory. Flat left rear tire for Brandon Gregory in that one. He spins down out of the way. We've got one stopped in turn two. That's Justin, Justin Ramsey. Ramsey. Yeah. Holy moly. That was a bad lap for the contenders. Well, actually, the guy that kind of got pinched out in all of that was Tyler French, and he ends up in the third spot, so it turned yeah. out okay for him. So let's have a look at this replay coming off of turn number four. Barrett got squirrely. Gregory cut down a left rear tire. Let's see what happens to Justin Ramsey. We really don't see anything happen to the 0-3. Whatever it was, it was up in turn one. He ended up over the banking. Gregory making his way to the 
pit area in that one machine. So we got that note earlier on that they had worked so hard putting a fresh power plant in the one machine. He's fixing to have a good result. Not saying he can't get it done, but I liked his chances a lot better when he was starting up in the top two or three spots. Another lap complete, so we're down to 14 to go here for the Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. Clinton sure is getting his steps in tonight. He's still smiling, though. Till he gets up here, gets a hold of us. <laughs> Wait till your father gets home. I'll get him some cheese curds. That'll put a smile on his face. Yep. It solves everything. Thank you, Kevin Gibson, for bringing me my snack here tonight. Doubling up down the backstretch, Cole McEwen in that 11 was in the pits. Wasn't out there for that restart, so I'm not sure if he scored a lap down or not. Looks as though he is. And I've got to say, I think that's the brightest yellow I've ever seen. On the 11? Yeah. Yeah. Sharp looking car, Cole McEwen. It's, it's a neat scheme. It's, it's unique, but when... I was looking at it earlier, like, wow, that, that is loud. Justin Ramsey back there, Brandon Gregory. There's a few cars to keep an eye on here, Josh. Uh, Black and Doug Anderson gained some spots there in that last restart in the one lap. So they're a little bit ahead. Now we're going to watch McEwen, Gregory, Ramsey from the back. Riley started up front. He's back there. Here we come. Next time around. Wait for it. Wait for it. They're still working on scoring here. Did Kyle Anderson just bring that 18 car out for the first time this week? I know it looks pristine, doesn't it? <laughs> you look like these are war-torn cars. We're getting into September, so they've been... Used and abused for a number of months. It's tough sledding here at Brighton Speedway. So we're going to stay under the caution flag. Still some concern on uh, the nine car seems to be the biggest issue right now. Of Josh Black. Well ventilated front end of black. As we circulate under yellow flag conditions. Is back to school a big time in the Callan household? No. It doesn't make much of a difference. Do you no. do you, now do you do you follow a traditional school year or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. It means nothing to me. I I love back to school for the fact that I despised it, and I'm so thankful I don't have to go anymore. But don't listen to me, kids. School is great, and you should be there. But I, I just I I did not like any part of school. Do you have brothers or sisters? I do not. So I always wanted to go back to school because that's where my friends were. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, I love the friendship part. It was just, ugh. Listen, you got to recognize a lost cause when you see one. <laughs> Hand up. There were certain classes I loved, but boy, oh, boy. Is lunch a class? Exactly. I loved in high school when you could have spare. <laughs> Let's sit in the cafeteria and play cards. French fries or gravy was a food oh, group, and oh, oh, yes. euchre, euchre was king. Yes. Fries and gravy. Oh, what's Clint got? <laughs> oh, is that a hamburger? Hot dog? It's not chicken nuggets or chicken strips. We're going to restart this race with a quick, quick fire it up with the Thunderstocks.
Yep. And we would have races. We would have gotten <laughs> away with it too. Who is that? Seventy six. Cody Driscoll. Allegedly. Driscoll going around in turn number four. That will draw a pretty quick yellow. Just getting one lap of green flag racing complete. Have a look at a replay, replay here on G-Force TV. And Driscoll was in a battle there, but it didn't look like contact. Just lost the back end of that 76 machine on the inside. Watch Doug May there a little ways back. If we could wind that back up. We could actually use our telestrator here. No. Yeah. Make sure you push the button. Where's the button? Now, watch. Yep, keep going. Back behind where Driscoll goes around. Watch. May. Right. Stop it right there. I believe it's this car here. Okay, now keep it moving. Whoop. All right, now. <laughs> there, we used the telestrator. One little line. That's, that's got to be an eventful Mighty Wipes moment for May. Yeah, well, you don't expect company in a feature race, and that <laughs> car climbing into his cockpit, that would be an unwanted visitor. There's some bright lights there on the 06. Chris Hackett. We're still sorting this lineup again. White, Gregory French. And tonight, Austin Reed in the 17, Mike Lucas and Caitlin O'Blenis, the top six. Field doubling up now. Possibly a problem on the McEwen number 11 as he drops to the back of the field. Corey White continuing to lead the way. Now is that Brock Gregory then in the 86? Yes. Brandon Gregory in the one? Yes. Okay. White flag out next time by. We'll get at it again. 13 to go in this 20 lap feature. Brandon Gregory back up to the 13th position after having to go into the pits and take on a fresh left rear tire. Slow pace being set by Corey White in the 19. Works down into turn number three. Heading towards the green flag with Brock Gregory to his outside. Oh, that backed him up. And, oh, problems for Brandon Gregory. He's locked four cars up in corner number three. And we're going to be under the caution again. I don't quite understand what happened there. So Brandon Gregory obviously with a problem, but look to the far right of the screen. There's the one of Green. I don't know if the car just quit or if Anderson got up underneath the one and he wasn't able to move forward, but officials are on the scene and Clinton Jeffrey is heading that direction. I thought it looked like the one, something went wrong and then they just stacked up at first i thought it was because they were coming at such a slow pace it was a bit of a a break check situation but but uh, the one <laughs> that's where nightmares come from clinton jeffrey getting the microphone fired up down there in turn number three he is on the scene ready to give a report And they're going to have to separate the Anderson 72 from the Brandon Gregory number one.
I just tend to believe it was the one that, that broke because he lost all steam and then, oh, look at that. What kind of bumper setup is that? That's like a free train front right? end. It's one of those moose bars that they right? run on transports. <laughs> So Anderson got his fangs into the one of Brandon Gregory. That's a mean-looking front end now. I wonder what those bars look like normally. <laughs> like, they have to come from somewhere. But I don't remember no, there being I know. bars exposed I on the front end of the 72. <laughs> so no laps were clicked off there. That happened even as they were coming to the green flag. And everything jammed up there. So they'll sort out this restart order depending who the officials deem were, was involved in that situation. Corey White in the 19 continues to lead the way over Brock Gregory in the 86, the 0 of Tyler French, 17 Jeff Humphrey, the 74 Mike Lucas. 16 of Caitlin O'Blennis having a solid night out there avoiding the the mishaps, let's see if she's got anything to move up and battle in her, into the top five. Yeah, you talk about the 18 looking clean. That 16 cars looking pretty sharp for being the end of the year as well. Here's another look at that restart. Yeah, the one just stopped going. A good job there to catch that. Zoomed in a little bit better. So it leads us to wonder who's going to be deemed an involved car and sent to the back. They're working on that in the next room right now. Now, where is the one of Brandon Gregory? The one of Brandon Gregory had stayed out onto the racetrack, but I missed them pulling into the pits. Anderson being sent to the back in the 72. And it's going to be a single file restart with 13 laps to go. And there's Brandon Gregory. All right, we'll try it again with 13 to go. Seven complete in this Brighton Automotive Thunderstock main event. 360 sprints, Com 4 still to come. That's the most awkward looking front bar. Well, and I sent some shenanigans back there, so I'm going to keep one eye on the back of the field, one <laughs> eye on the front of the field. It's going to be awkward then, Nick. <laughs> pass each other but we can manage back under green flag here at brighton speedway that was an interesting start oh the back. he finished him <laughs> brandon gregory clearly with a stuck throttle going into turn number three which cured itself once doug anderson had spun out leader smoking Well then, 
I don't think it'll fi end the night of Anderson, though. He hit him a ton in the left rear corner of that 72. Flat left rear on the 72, guys. On the right side of the screen, watch the closing right down into the corner. Well, that was interesting. I'll say. Oh, wow. A lot of... I shouldn't say a lot of damage to that wheel, but a bit of damage. Clint, do you think it tweaked the rear end in the 72 car? I don't, guys. All I can see here is a flat left rear, so not sure. But as I look under it, I don't see too much wrong with it. But it's hard to tell with a flat tire in the way. We'll see what Anderson chooses to do. I am... I'm amazed at the number of bars at both ends of this race car. You can see <laughs> some of the bodywork peeled away from the rear end. There's a pretty healthy rear bumper structure as well on that 72. I think that would tend to make our guys a little rammy with all that. Well, no, exactly. Bars right? on front. Wonder how close they pit to each other. Man. And lost in all of this, the leader, Corey White, showing smoke out of the 19. He was as they came down the front stretch after that bit of shenanigans. You did mention something about that. All right, the track is clear of officials down in three and four the anderson 72 being taken back to the pit area off the end of turns one and two so white your leader Brock Gregory in the second spot, Tyler French in third with Austin Reed fourth, and Mike Lucas to the fifth spot. Kate Lono Blenis with a great run there in the sixth spot. As we're ready to come back to the green flag, they quickly get everything sorted out. We'll keep our eyes on the 19 at Corey White as Greg reported smoke coming off the race leader brings them up to speed on the front straightaway. There's a the little plume there. Humphrey headed to the outside. It was the long way around one and two. Let's see if he can make up any ground in three and four. Continues the smoke going into the corners. Uh, Brock Gregory right there giving chase. French is there. Top three have broken away. From Austin Reed back there in that 17, and Mike Lucas in the fifth position. Oblenis will drop a spot there now to the 18 of Kyle Anderson. Down the back straightaway, look at that top three still nose to tail, working down into three and four as we reach the halfway point of this one. Corey White doing a great job holding on here in that 19 machine. Whatever that plume of smoke is, it's not cost him any speed, that's for sure. And you almost wonder if it's something that's rubbing under braking as he gets into the corner. Gregory stacked up behind him. French is right there as well. Here's Mike Lucas to the inside of Austin Reed for the fourth position now. And Ramsey's working his way back through the field. French continually poking his nose to the inside, looking to make a move on that second place, Gregory. Gregory right there behind the race leader. Corey White, who we covered Corey White winning a race here before, and he hadn't won a lot of events in his career, so he's going to want G-Force to be around often. <laughs> Well, he's got some company with Gregory and French right there. Hounding the back bumper. Slower car in front. I believe that's O'Hara in the six. 
As White stays to the inside. Oh, Harrow. O'Hara gets down into him. Oh, and then he gets into Tyler French. O'Hara with his hands full out there. With an ill-handling race car, the leaders are able to get by, and they'll continue their battle with five laps remaining. Corey White doing a good job, but how long can he hold back Gregory and French? White off the corner. Side by side behind him. French now is going to take a try. They'll make it three wide. Brock Gregory on the extreme outside. French takes the second spot. Not a lot of bite up there on the high side. He was able to drift up in front of the Gregory 86. A little bit more traffic ahead of Corey White. He'll dip to the inside down in three and four. He's doing a good job navigating the traffic as one goes around right in front of our race leader. There's a mighty wipes moment for the leader. Things. The 06, I think, is going to try and keep going so we can stand the green flag. Oh! A close call for Doug May. Or create another yellow. <laughs> we thought we were going to need a yellow, but then, yeah, we were. <laughs> Two, Two to, go. to go. Justin Ramsey's got himself into the mix. Look at this. He powers himself down into corner number one. Gregory all over the back end of Corey White. We've got one off the back stretch. Cole McEwen into the pit area. Corey White defending the inside vigorously as he takes the white flag. One more lap to go. This is going to be an interesting lap, I think. Here's Ramsey right there in the back bumper to the 19. Gives him a little shot into corner number two. That might have helped White as he goes into the back stretch down into corner three. Ramsey into the back end of White trying to get to the inside off a of turn number four. White goes around the wing, gonna go to Gregory French, finishes second, Lucas third, and White might not make it across the line at all. Wow. Oh, Muffin. Now, I want to say we've seen something similar to this down here as well, have we not? Yeah, I think I have over the years. <laughs> no, but White going... Clinton Jeffrey heading down to seat Corey White, who is unceremoniously parked about 50 feet prior to victory lane, and White is taking a walk. Every speedway handles these situations a little bit differently, so can't really comment on that. We handle everything with video cameras, so we'll at least be able to watch. What a show that was. How about a hand raise, fans, for Corey White, who almost got the feature win, came up just short in that number 19. I got Corey White here. Corey, you led that one all the way to the lap, uh, well, right to the very end. Give it your side of things. Uh, right to the last lap there, I felt the old 3 I believe it was the old 3 on my bumper. And I, I don't know if they're blind up there or what, but that was my win. Hands down it was. Hey! Hands down, that was mine. I don't see where the call goes, but. All right, we'll let him catch his breath. There you hear it from Corey White. And the frustration at that point, and I understand Corey White being disappointed, regardless of how the call goes, the 19 car finished 50 feet prior to the start-finish line. Yep. Tough to, uh, tough to take that one back as we look at the replay there. Justin Ramsey was up on the back bumper of the race leader. Justin Ramsey had cars behind him. I'd be curious to see if he was getting pushed through turn number four. Tough turn of events. Things just opened up for Brock Gregory, and he was in the right spot at the right time. And I mean, he hung there all race long. He was right behind Corey White, and he got to be there right to the very end, and he was. And Brock Gregory's going to pick up the win. He'll be down in APC Victory Lane with our Clinton Jeffrey. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. How about it for Brock Gregory gets the win here? Well, Brock, sometimes you got to be fast and sometimes you got to be lucky. You were both there fast on the last lap when everybody got in their jingle. They got lucky. They had you covered, but at the end, you grabbed the win. Yeah, I just 
got lucky, like you said, and uh, I saw them coming through, and I was hoping for something to happen, and it went my way. I stayed on the top and drove around it. It uh, made the night that much better. Congrats, Brock Gregory picks up the Thunderstock win here tonight. In a wild finish here, we'll be right back live on G-Force TV 360 Sprints for the Lons We Do series coming up next. Early man discovered oh. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Lockhart's Odyssey is BRP's newest marine dealer for the legendary Alumacraft fishing boats, the luxurious Manitous, and the affordable CD Switch pontoons. Come aboard our new outdoor showroom, located here in Cortland at Lockhart's Odyssey, your BRP superstore. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. and you're not willing to make it dicey, you're not passing nobody and you're not going to be fast. Oh, Victor Bomberry found his limit. That's unbelievable. <laughs> We are back at Brighton Speedway with two features left to go here on G-Force TV. Second night of the Labor Day Classic. It's time for the Lawns We Do 360 Sprint Car Series. Here's your starting lineup for tonight's main event. Starting on the pole in the 42W, the Joyceville Jet, Rick Wilson. Starting in second at a St. Pete, Quebec in the 3G, Dale Goslin. Lining up third out of Scotland in the 47X, D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook. And to his outside in the 15T out of Dunville, this is Ryan Turner. Starting in fifth, last night's winner out of Mount Bridges in the 45, Tricky Nicky Nick Sheridan. And to his outside from Freelton, the 12, D.D. Darren Dryden. Rolling off seventh out of Picton in the 11J, Chris Jones. And starting in eighth from Brantford in car number 10, downtown Mitch Brown. Starting ninth out of Scotland in the 87X, it'll be Sean Evans. And last night's runner-up starting in the 10th spot at a Grand Island, New York, in the 21K, Kyle Phillips. Starting 11th out of Lafroy in the 25, it's the wily one, Warren Mahoney. And going off 12th out of Oshwick in car number 68, Aaron Turkey. Starting 13th from Tilsonburg in the 17X, it's Corey Turner. And going 14th from Kester Center in the 11, Jamie Turner. In the 15th starting position, out of Binbrook in car number 9, it's the live wire, Liam Martin. And going in the 16th spot from Picton, the 84, Tyler Rand. Starting 17th out of Beamsville, the 88H, that is Josh Hansen. And rolling off 18th from Hamilton, the 19D, Allen Downey. 19th starting position from St. Catharines in the 46, it's Kevin Pauls. And starting in 20th from Brockville, the 98, Evan Reynolds. 21st starting position, it's Nathan Jackson in the 18. Starting 22nd. In car number zero, the Oshwinkin Flyer, Glenn Styers. And rolling off 23rd from London in car 15, Mike Farrell. 23 cars make up 
the starting lineup for tonight's main event for the Lawns We Do 360 Sprint Car Series, 25 laps the distance. Hey, Greg, you see that light there on the front straightaway? Yeah. It's all the family members of that wasp from earlier. Yeah, exactly. And they're angry at you. See that pale guy <laughs> in the booth? <laughs> Go get him. Light him up. Hey, I let him bite me. I didn't do anything to him. You took care of him. Yeah, well, he was hurting my... I, I put out a hit on him. You did the job. <laughs> you don't mess with my friends. <laughs> I use that term loosely. <sighs> <sighs> Two features to go. Great shot there of cars getting pushed off down track side. Do you get the feeling we're like what two prison cellmates would be like? Like you don't choose to be together, but you know you're kind of stuck. You might as well make the best of it. Yeah, pretty much. Although I'd, I'm glad I don't have to share a toilet with you. <laughs> and I'm not taking the bottom bunk. <laughs> Always great hospitality down here at Brighton Speedway. Fun to meet the fans down here. Yeah, I love every trip here. It's uh, fantastic. Fans are great. Great atmosphere. Some years a little better when you get cake pops, but maybe next right, year. Right. Even Spencer was asking for cake pops. Well, that's a given. <laughs> So Glenn Styers, fresh off 51 laps over a Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in the NASCAR Pinty Series. And, of course, tonight we'll do battle in the 360 Sprint Car. The Joyceville Jet going to launch from the pole position. Has he got a checkered flag left in him, Greg? Oh, I think he does. I absolutely do. The Joyceville Jet, this is... I think this is his best track by far over the years in the Sprint Cars. This has been it. He's just been so good here at Brighton. I don't know what it is about this track that suits his driving skills, but boy, oh boy, the Joyceville Jet, he's got it in him. I remember him winning at Rolling Wheels at Super yep. Dirt Week against the best of the best in 360s. That was an exciting night. Yeah, I was there that night. All right, field taking formation into the four wide salute. Assume the position, race fans. Assume the position. Get the cell phones out. Turn those lights on. Get a program, a hat. Get something. Wave these drivers on. 23 strong. They're coming down the front stretch to salute you. They are four wide and fancy for you, the fans. This is the Lawns We Do 360 Sprint Car Series. assumes their position two by two how many think the Joyceville Jets got one more in them we'll find out here in 25 laps he'll go from the pole the car has been lightning quick tonight white flag is out Brighton Speedway next time by we're going green flag racing 25 laps two by two 12 rows of beautifully prepared sprint cars ready to come to life. Rick Wilson, Dale Goslin on the front row. Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. Let's end all the anticipation as we bring to you our feature presentation. got pretty
pretty narrow down there on the front straightaway. Everybody able to avoid chaos out in front. Rick Wilson leading over Dylan Westbrook. Ryan Turner picks up the third spot. Here comes Dylan Westbrook down to the inside, but it's going to be Wilson on the outside now. As they go down into corner number three, they're wheel to wheel. D Dubs on the bottom. The Joyceville Jet on the outside at the line. It's going to be D Dubs, your leader. Westbrook takes over the lead. Can he draw away from the 42W? Wilson staying up on the high side of the racetrack. Committed to that outside groove here in the early going. Dylan Westbrook down low, putting some distance between himself and second place. Ryan, oh, Rick Wilson clipped the Ute tire down in corners one and two. That may put us under the caution flag. The tire is out in the groove, and now Liam Martin has a bit of a stumble there, and he'll go off the track and put us under the caution flag. We'll have a look at the 42 of Rick Wilson when it comes by to see if there's any damage. Same with the 9 of Liam Martin. He clipped that relocated tire down in the corner. There's Wilson hitting it with his left front. Doesn't look to be any damage. Great job by our camera operator down there. Sprint car team support this weekend or what? Yeah, boy, oh boy, what a turnout for both divisions. And, uh, you know, the Rinaldi family has invested so much into the sprint car racing here in the province of Ontario. And and uh, this weekend's a good, I think, a good payback to them. That cars came out in bunches and uh, great full fields in both the 360s and the action sprint tour. And on top of that, man, oh man, the racing. Whew. Talking to Mark Rinaldi last night, he said this is quickly becoming maybe the second best sprint car weekend we've got here. You know, Canadian National is a big deal, but this is turning into quite a tradition with the crates and the 360s here tonight. Full fields, both nights. You guys said it. Amazing. I want to send a quick shout out to our camera guys. You mentioned Trent in turn number one. Working hard. Jeremy's in camera one. McLean in camera three and Jack on camera four. Abby with the drone. These guys give us some amazing looks around the speedway here. And we can't forget the guys in the truck, Spencer and Dan as well. Well, and we have to extend a hello from Tracy Lynn to Tyler Rand. And to quote Tracy Lynn's message, I miss him. I'm wishing him good luck and I'll see him when he gets home tomorrow. Heart, 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 heart. So from Tracy Lynn to Tyler Rand. If love could power a sprint car, Greg, <laughs> there'd be a Care Bears episode. You better contact Hallmark, buddy. That's a card right there. <laughs> I'm glad she sent hearts and not smooches. Because I... <laughs> Clint, Omaha. that's what we called you to the tower for. You were supposed to pass that message along. Oh, I got signing something else. Hey, let's talk series. So we saw some great runs out of Ryan Turner this weekend. Rick Wilson, of course. We know what Dylan Westbrook could do. We talked a lot about last night's winner, Nick Sheridan. Adam, as we were leaving CTMP today, Nick was crew chief as we talked about for the Clute family. He looked at me and said, I'll see you tonight, Clint. I'm getting back-to-back -back wins. And he's up in fourth right now. Still got two of the best here in Ontario to battle with that are currently knocking it down. Of course, Rick Wilson can't keep him out either in that 42. Well, look at the top five that Nick Sheridan is battling with. Westbrook, Rick Wilson, Ryan Turner, and Mitch Brown. That, that's a lot of success he is surrounded with out there, and he absolutely belongs with them. I like what I'm seeing out of Mitch Brown tonight. He's got that new chassis. This will be his third race, I believe, with this chassis. And he's starting to figure things out. Takes a little bit of time to get accustomed to that uh, fresh ride, but he's got things figured out and good to see for the uh, driver of the 10 machine. You know, his crew guy, Shrek, we know he had a bad accident to start the summer. I, I saw, I think it might have been your dad's message today, Greg, said Shrek's goal is to be at the Nationals. So wouldn't yep. that be cool to have Chris back out on Schwiegen after uh, what they've been through this summer? Yeah, that'd be fantastic to see if that uh, can happen. We hope so. Looks like the flagman with the white flag in hand. 
We'll give the signal to Dylan Westbrook next time by. We'll go back to green flag racing. How many laps will it take Westbrook to catch the tail end of the field, given that we're single file? Yeah, it's going to be quick here, I would say. A couple of laps, you'll see him. Yeah. <laughs> The year Dylan's had, you got to think this has been making him more hungry than ever. You know, you get to a place where you're pretty dominant. Not saying you lose your hunger, but when you get through a year like this, boy, it really'll really put a fire under you again. It's a humbling sport for certain as Westbrook slowly off of turn number four jumps on the throttle. We're back to green. Everybody clean and green through one and two the first time. Dylan Westbrook's already a half a lap behind the back of the pack. You'll see them very quickly. Here comes Ryan Turner now working down to the inside of the Joyceville jet. Rick Wilson's got the spot, though, as Nick Sheridan sizing both of them up. Man, Jamie Turner a couple times tonight has come off at turn number four. Dangerously close to that outside wall, but he's found some speed on the high side. Trying to work through some traffic, but out front it's all Westbrook. Ryan Turner in the second spot. Now here comes Sheridan working the inside of Rick Wilson for third. Nick's really got corner four figured out again. He's got that great bite. He'll really pitch the car off of corner four. Gets a great launch that helped him get by Rick Wilson. And now the top three trying to break away. It's Westbrook, Turner, and Sheridan. Sheridan needs the rest of the track to blow off to make that bottom of four really pay off for him. He needs the middle and the outside of the track to, to go away and not have Dylan Westbrook find that same line. Chris Jones restarted sixth there at that last green flag. He's now working on Rick Wilson for the fourth spot. He disposed to Mitch Brown, and now he's working on the back end of the Joyceville Jet. In the lap traffic goes Dylan Westbrook. He'll get around Mike Farrell in the 15. The pack gets heavier the farther he goes. There's 15 laps remaining. Ryan Turner said last night after his third place finish, he was happy to find some speed here at Brighton, a track that he struggled with a little bit. And he is starting to close in on the leader, Dylan Westbrook, as he works through the lap traffic. Westbrook closing in on a couple of cars side by side. Nate Jackson and Glenn Styers. Westbrook right up behind them. He'll drop to the inside as Styers put the zero a lap down. A pair of uh, what looks like Jamie Turner cars in front. It's Nathan Jackson will be the first car in front of the leader. And then Jamie Turner in the 11. Jackson's got that nose wing all crumpled over. Here comes Ryan Turner. He's caught him and so is Sheridan. He's right there with Turner. Halfway through this sprint car feature event and we've got company at the front. Westbrook to the outside of Glenn Styers and Nate Jackson. He'll put a couple of cars between himself and Nick Sheridan in second. And he is working the bottom. He got by Turner. Here he goes down to the low side at one. They'll make it three wide with Glenn Styers stuck in the middle. Turner kind of gets out of the way there in the second corner and loses ground to Sheridan. Now they've got to work on Nate Jackson ahead of Glenn Styers. Ryan Turner still struggling with the zero machine. Dylan Westbrook has got up on the high side and found some bite to get around Jamie Turner. And Nick Sheridan going up there as well as everyone's down in the line that he wants to be when it comes to lap cars. Sheridan will work it down into corner number one and try and close the gap another time on D-dubs. No traffic between himself and the race leader now, although Jamie Turner firing back to the inside. Nick Sheridan going to get back to the bottom of the racetrack. We're within 10 laps of the finish, and Sheridan can see the leader, Westbrook. He's right there. Ryan Turner's lost touch with the top two. Rick Wilson a good distance behind him, so he's nestled into that third spot. As Dylan Westbrook gets around and down, he's sure will have to do the same next. Westbrook with Tyler Rand in front of him. Kevin Paul's in front of Tyler Rand as the laps tick away. Things have really equalized out there. Nick Sheridan not really closing that gap anymore. He's kind of into a hold his position mode. Oh, Sheridan lost a little ground there in corner two. Did not have a good time through there. That go around as Dylan Westbrook catching Tyler Rand up next. Five laps left to go and Sheridan needs to get by Downey. 
All over the back end of that number 19 with no opportunity to make a pass. He'll pitch the car sideways into three and four, get to the bottom, but he can't get into the bite to make a move on the 19D. Downey holding his own. He's uh, not impeding the 45 by any means, just holding his line. And now Sheridan will go up top to try and get around him. Then he gets way up high in four. Not a lot of bite up there at all for Sheridan. Dylan Westbrook, though, hasn't gotten away either. It'll be two laps to go, and now they're going to get some slower traffic with even slower traffic. This is really going to bottleneck things at the front. Yeah, he's kind of trapped behind some of this racing that's going on in front of him, but Sheridan still can't get by Downey. Westbrook to the outside. Oh! Contact with Tyler Rand. He'll come up in front of Nick Sheridan. Sheridan keeps a foot in the throttle. Will stay green. No, Tyler Rand with problems up there in turn number four. Don't know if we'll finish this or if we'll go yellow. Yellow flag wow. is displayed. Nice job by Sheridan. Wow. If now, he had not kept it rolling, he would have lost that spot. Now, he will probably restart second position Going when they go back to, to the last lap. Now, Ryan Turner will contest that. Tyler Rand car appears to be all right. Looks like they're just going to maybe push him off. They're taking a quick cursory look around, but from my vantage point, everything looks to be okay. Sheridan and Turner jockeying for that second spot. We know Dylan Westbrook is the leader. If I'm Mike Farrell, I just want out of there. Yeah, I, I don't know why he's pushing that issue as the... But hey, let's have a look at the replay. Dylan Westbrook down into turn three. A little bit of contact with Rand in the 84. Sends Rand spinning. Sheridan up way to the outside of the racetrack. But it's better than getting involved in the wreck. Tyler yep. Rand taking a swing at Westbrook there. It's one of those nights. That was just a gesture. I mean, not, not doing anything vicious, but a gesture. He... So Farrell will go back around. Martin comes back out. And that second spot still being hotly contested. Well, the, the scoreboard is completely off because it shows Sheridan in fourth. Downey in second. Yeah. Downey's a lap down. He's got Ryan Turner in the third, uh, the second spot. Nick Sheridan in fourth by the scoring and timing. Now there's a couple of pitfalls here. One of them, which would be terribly unfortunate if they consider the 45 an involved car, which I don't personally think it's an option. I could see it either way. I could see Ryan Turner being scored second because he stayed on the racetrack. And Sheridan losing that spot back to third for his excursion. But I could see Sheridan having the second spot also, as that's where he was running the previous lap. So it looks like the 45, no, no. They're neck and neck, side by side through turn three and four. Now, would Sheridan necessarily be deemed as an involved car? He didn't make contact with anyone. He went off the racetrack, but... It's a quirky rule that gets assessed differently at a lot of different places. And it depends if you run, say, an Ascar Pinty Series or a Dirt Modified Super Dirt Week type thing where every lap counts. Right. If you go off the racetrack, if you have an excursion, you're scored wherever you fall back in line. Right. So we're hearing from the next room, this will be a green-white checker finish.
So it's either going to be a green and a white or a green then a white. And we'll find out. Dylan Westbrook in the fourth. 47X looking to secure this victory. Nick Sheridan looking to go back to back. I think it's going to be green and white. Here we go. Single file past the cone. That'll count too. Green and white. Final time. Westbrook get his low down into one and two. Stretches down the back stretch. Here they come for the final time. D dubs through three and four. This is going to feel good for him. Westbrook gets the win over Sheridan, Turner, Wilson, and Brown. The field rumbles past. An impressive weekend for young Nick Sheridan, Ryan Turner, with a few visits to the podium. Nick Sheridan pulling up alongside to congratulate Dylan Westbrook. Nick Sheridan second, Ryan Turner third, then it was Rick Wilson, Mitch Brown fifth, sixth, Chris Jones seventh, Dale Goslin eighth will go to Corey Turner, Darren Dryden ninth, and Sean Evans crosses the line with a top ten. Kyle Phillips eleventh, Josh Hansen gets his, himself up to twelfth tonight, Aaron Turkey thirteenth, Evan Reynolds fourteenth, Kevin Pauls with fifteenth, Warren Mahoney sixteenth, seventeenth, Allen Downey eighteenth, Nathan Jackson. 19th, Jamie Turner. 20th, Glenn Styers. 21st, Tyler Rand. 22nd, Mike Farrell. Liam Martin, 23rd. How about that Rick Wilson? You know, we lost yeah. those first few spots. You wondered how far he was going to drift back, but he hung strong in that fourth position. Gave that 42W a good result. What a weekend for Dylan Westbrook. Friday night while leading... Adelschweken Speedway got high up in corner number four into the marbles and rolled that car pretty hard, but not so hard that it wouldn't still roll. The axles and everything in the steering okay. They they repaired, they replaced the left rear tire. He came back out and uh, kept some points for him in the uh, championship standings. Has to get the car back together, brings it here to Brighton Speedway and picks up a win. And this is going to be a feel-good win, I think, for Dylan Westbrook with the year he's at. I think it will. You know, it, it was a statement victory tonight. He dr drove a great race in the 47X in tricky conditions. Let's send it to Clinton Jeffrey, who's with Dylan Westbrook climbing from the 47X. Thanks a lot, guys. D-Dubs out here, a place he's been multiple times at Victory Lane. Dylan Westbrook wins the Lawns We Do 360 race here tonight. Dylan, it's been a long weekend for you and your crew. Three nights. I mean, Friday was a long one, but tonight's got to make everything feel a bit better. You know, uh, to be coming through, get redemption here tonight, pick up the win. Great deal. Yeah, uh, after Friday it kind of sucked. Uh, more just my fault than anything. So, uh, crew with it, working hard, got the car all put back together. Uh, last night we were good, just started a little bit too deep in the field, and uh, tonight just worked out for us. Uh, ran real well all night, car was really hooked up. Uh, kind of feel bad for, I think it was Tyler Rand, that kind of got into him a little bit there. But uh, just real tight racing, it's starting to take rubber a little bit on the bottom, so I decided to make sure I could uh, get down there and wasn't sure how close anyone was to me. It felt like they were right behind me the whole time. They were. Congrats, D-Dub. Thank you. Dylan Westbrook, ladies and gentlemen, wins the Lawns We Do feature here tonight. Ryan Turner and Nikki Sheridan in there to talk to each other. We'll get in a moment with Nick in just a minute, guys. Impressive weekend for Nick Sheridan. Boy, oh boy, the way his year started, it's ending the opposite way. Well, Nick, uh, do you need a nap, kid? It's been a couple of wild days, you know Win last night, crew chief at 7 o'clock this morning over at CTMP. Got back here around 5 o'clock and come up to a second place run here tonight. Heck of a weekend for you, kid. Yes, I need a nap, Quinn. <laughs> uh, no, it's been an amazing weekend. I mean, Brighton's always been great to me. We've had some good success here, and uh, it's been a heck of a weekend. I think I counted like five hours of sleep in the last two or three nights, but uh, we've been digging here. This car's really good. We finally got her figured out, but uh, I didn't get a chance to last night. I got to thank all my sponsors, Pride Seeds, Vibrant Farms, Sweet Performance Engines, um, uh, Local sponsor of ours here, Reynolds Trucking. He's from around here. He helped us out a bunch. Really appreciate it. And uh, I got to thank the 15 team. They sold me two tires to make me through the night, so I don't think I'd be able to be here without them. Right on there. You have it from Nick Sheridan. We'll get in with Ryan Turner. Ryan, pretty good run for you. You know, uh, 
at the end there, I'm sure you wanted that spot. They went back last, completed lap. That probably frustrated a little bit. Let's talk about the drive, though. Solid weekend for you. You know, you've been on the podium. We've talked three nights in a row now. That means your weekend's going pretty good. I know you'd like to win three, but three uh, interviews at the end of the race is pretty good, too. Yeah, uh, first of all, I didn't congrats uh, Nick Sheridan last night, his first win. I got my first win at Brighton. It's very special, so congrats to him. Uh, yeah, you know, I told Nick no... Uh, no offense, but I'm gonna protest that one a little bit after here. Um, you know, our car was our car was good. We struggled a little bit in the grip there. Um, is it sad to say we're a little disappointed with third right now, which is probably a good thing? But uh, you know, we're always pushing to get more. Uh, you know, I can't thank my sponsors enough: uh, Nitro 54, Creative Edge, uh, you know, Pro Stripe, uh, Howie Bins, uh, uh, Ackland Insurance. Uh, we got uh, Strouds that just came on. Uh, you know, and I'm missing a couple other here: uh, Titus One. And uh, there's another one there, but thanks to all our sponsors, thanks to our crew, uh, our first of all, our car owners, Dan, Steve, Trish, uh, you know, Brandon, he's worked his butt off all week. This has been quite the week for us. Uh, you know, I got to thank my, my wife, Jenna, uh, Braden. Uh, we got a bunch of people back in the pits. So we got to thank them all. And uh, thanks again to the fans for having us, and we had a great time. I tell you to get some sleep, Ryan, but you got two young babies at home. Good luck, buddy. Great job. Great weekend. Yeah, you know, uh, my wife helps me out a bunch on that. So, you know, I do get a little bit of sleep, but uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Ryan Turner will finish third. Nick Sheridan, second tonight in your winner. D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook picks up the lawns. We do 360 feature tonight. We'll be right back live on G-Force TV. From Brighton Speedway, we got one race to go. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Introducing the fleet lineup by CargoEase. Our commercial and Titan series slide come with weight capacities of 1,500 to 3,000 pounds and features HDPE Ultra Ply Deck, a quarter inch rubber mat, eight inch aluminum side rails, a patented spring release T handle, and L hook fasteners. This is the CargoEase fleet lineup. like a big, big, fast track. If you're not aggressive and you're not willing to make it dicey, you're not passing nobody and you're not going to be fast. Oh, Victor Bomberry found his limits. That's unbelievable. <laughs> We're back live at Brighton Speedway, and there you see Darren Dryden, who's been crowned the 360 Sprint car champion here at Brighton Speedway with the Lawns We Do mini series. So, congratulations go out to Darren. And he is a great young ambassador for the sport. Not only can he make a race car look good, he, he is very professional in everything that he does. And boy, is he a whale of a talent, Adam. Great driver, and he got it done here at Brighton. I mean, talk about if you were to say, hey, we're going to put on a sprint car series at Brighton Speedway, who would, who's the top five? you know, in this championship fight, if we're going to have Dylan Westbrook and Mitch Brown's going to be out. And you go on down the list. I don't think Darren Dryden would have been in that top five. He'd be in the top 10, top 12, but that's how deep the field is, right? And uh, being his rookie campaign, even I think he was shocked and uh, surprised by that. He admitted so after the race there. So congratulations to Darren. One race left to go. It's for 
The Bills' Johns Comp fours, they're lined up over in corner four, and this is how they'll start tonight. On the pole, the 55, Zach Humphrey to the outside, the 44 of Tommy Bailey. Rolling off third in the 19 tonight, that's Adam Davidson and Aiden Fletcher's in the 42 junior. In the fifth starting spot tonight is Travis McLean and Carter Rhodes in the 18. We'll roll off sixth. Seventh is Adam Fleeler. He's behind the wheel of the 15 this evening. Sager in the 20 starts eighth. Starting in ninth, Tim Moore in the 54 and Travis Fox in the 24 will start in 10th. 11th is Jaden Miller in the 91. Scott Simpson in the 01 starts 12th. 13th is Nico Hansen in the 27 and Evan Minnie in the 17E. I don't believe to make the call because of the blown motor so uh sorry about that news evan we uh, wish you were out there but nonetheless hope you have a uh, great birthday we wished you that last night 15th terry blight in the 37 and then 16th starting spot dave chamberlain in the 04 and travis chamberlain in the 77 rounding out the field and just like that labor day classic weekend is down to one race over in a flash as a meeting of the minds going on down on the front stretch what, what do you think that conversation entails they're talking about you oh they'd be smiling more if they were talking about me <laughs> or giving hand gestures like someone eating a hamburger you straight home tonight I'm going to bed right now. Oh, you're staying here, right? Number four. I may regret it tomorrow in traffic, but... Step one, step two. Final feature of the night, ready to come to the green flag. Zach Humphrey and Tommy Bailey. And away here we go. Fifteen laps the distance. Don't blink. You might just miss it as Humphrey leads the way down the back straightaway. Tommy Bailey up high, and it's Shannon Davidson in the 19 down low. Now tonight and that that's Adam Davidson in Shoot. the 19. Missed oh, it right well in the infield. That much. And Travis McLean in the 22. Scoring, says Tyson Gregory, but uh, we'll go with Travis McLean as the green flag continues. Two laps on the board. Right now, it's been all Zach Humphrey since the drop of the green flag. Bailey holding on to the second spot. Adam Davidson hanging on to third there as he drives it deep into turn number three. He's able to get the nose to the inside, just not quite able to keep the speed up. It's Aiden Fletcher working the high side in that 42 machine, running in the fifth place, but battling for fourth. Carter Rhodes back there with Sager and Fleeler. They're having a good fight outside of the top five as well. As we're down to 11 laps left to go in the 2023 edition of the Labor Day Classic. Humphrey continuing to lead the way. Tommy Bailey trying to close that gap in the 44. He'll close the distance on the entry at turn three. About three car lengths behind the race leader, Zach Humphrey. That 91's really struggling. Yeah, Jaden Miller's had a rough go since the drop of the green flag. Bailey starting to close the gap right now. On the leader, Zach Humphrey. Slower car right in front of the leaders. Davidson gave up the third spot to Travis McLean. Now Davidson back to the inside. But a battle for the lead is about to ensue as Humphrey has company. Bailey, a car length and a half off the back of our race leader, Humphrey, in that 55 machine. 55 and 44 streak down the back straightaway to the halfway point of this feature event. Here comes Bailey. Right there on the back bumper of Humphrey. Sager now has caught Davidson, has been on a bit of a run towards the front in that 20. 
Bailey's there. I almost feel like he's kind of sizing things up here for a couple of laps. Yeah, but Humphrey able to out-pull that 44 machine down the straightaway. Bailey's quicker into the corner to the center of the corner, but Humphrey is faster off the turn and down the straightaway. Right there, Bailey closes in, and yeah, you're right. Right here is where the 55 kind of pulls a bit off. Davidson, Sager, Fleeler now into the top five. Mistake by Humphrey there in turn number two. That opens the door to Bailey on the inside. Into the final five laps of this one. They battle side by side into three and four. Good, clean, close racing. Oh, till there. <laughs> that's, that's still relatively clean as Humphrey closes the door on Bailey. He'll maintain that lead, build it up to a car length and a half, and they've still got nearly half a straightaway over third spot. Yeah, it's Fleeler now. He's uh, been on a march through the field. He's to the outside of the Davidson 19. As Humphrey continues to lead, Bailey right there in the second spot. The battle for third hotly contested. Sager's in behind this one as well. Great action out here in this comp four division. Two laps to go. Signal's going to be given. Bailey closing in once again on Humphrey. He's going to take a higher entry into one and two. Has he been playing with our race leader? Here comes the 15 to the outside of Davidson. This time by, it's the white flag for the leader, Humphrey. With Bailey giving chase, the battle for third long from over one lap to settle it. There might be traffic come into play as the leaders approach a slower car. Zach Humphrey has controlled this race from the drop of the green. Here comes Bailey. He closes the gap. Can he get there? Here they come off a of four. Bailey's going to give it all he has, but Humphrey's going to pick up the win over Bailey, Fleeler, Davidson, and Sager. Great show of driving here in this final feature event. A good battle for the win. And just like that, the Labor Day Classic weekend here at Brighton Speedway it's complete. has come to an end. What a great weekend of racing, great weather, great crowds. Thank you to everyone that came and sat in the grandstands this weekend and supported Brighton Speedway. Very much appreciated. Some of the best fans in all of motorsports anytime we come here we get treated so well and we thank you for that on behalf of all of our g-force team and we're going to hear from clinton jeffrey one more time as he goes down to victory lane to talk with zach humphrey our winner here tonight but uh, overall fantastic weekend and we're just thankful to uh, be a part of it here with g-force tv Zachary Humphrey brings the 55 racing machine here into Victory Lane. Crew already on the scene to offer congratulations. And we'll get him on and talk to our final feature winner of the Labor Day Classic. What a great tradition we're building here at Brighton Speedway. The sprint cars have come out in force and the local classes put on some amazing racing as well. I want to thank the Rinaldis and all the staff and everybody here. Here comes Zachary Humphrey into Victory Lane here at Brighton. He is your APC, Victory Lane. Stander in this one, we'll get him down as he hops off the hood. Come on over, Zach. Zach, great drive here in this one to close out the weekend. Uh, you gotta be real happy with how your night went. Oh, very happy. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming. I gotta thank the great crew that I got behind us here. Sorry. I gotta thank all the great crew. We got Braden, we got my brother Ethan, I got Cody, I got Adam, my godfather, Talia. We use her truck to get my car here every week. My mom for watching my daughter while I'm down here doing what I love. Anybody else? Uh, great job, man. Congrats on the win. Uh, I gotta thank my dad. I can't forget that. I gotta thank my father. There you have it. Zachary Humphrey will win it here and close out the Labor Day Classic at Brighton Speedway. On behalf of everybody trackside, it's been fun. Guys, take us home. Thanks, Clint. A fantastic weekend here at Brighton Speedway for the Labor Day Classic. Great racing in all divisions and a privilege to be a part of it. So thank you for tuning in, Adam. Have a safe trip home. It was a pleasure. Uh, just a great weekend. I, I mean, and we're not just saying that. The action was probably the best we've ever seen in the Labor Day Classic. I'd have to agree. Just fantastic racing. We had some fresh faces in victory lane. Then you get 
Dylan Westbrook overcoming what had been a tough weekend. So the best of the best, some new talent rising to the top. And then victory lane celebrations like this one right here with Zach Humphrey and the gang down there. That's what it's all about. Absolutely it is. So thank you for tuning in on behalf of Clinton, Jeffrey, and Adam Ross. I'm Greg Kelman saying so long. We'll see you next Friday night at the Big O here on GeForce TV. Copyrighted broadcast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of GeForce TV. GeForce TV would like to thank you for your support and for watching today's broadcast.